56% inside the 30, but uh, also last week I think they had seven. The ball down to the centre wing now, Persa up high, McKenna threads his way beautifully through and then gets tackled, Persa backs him up, the ball back to the Footscray half forward line,
inside the first two minutes and they look revved up Hawkins gets them out of the center and the crowd fired up here who's the, who's the scout Rod McPherson again his second it's too far for Derek Shaw that's the second time he's kicked uh, too long in a couple of minutes Neville Shaw Gary Shaw
disappointing game away, but uh, once again, we've just got to be patient. We're going to crack that one away pretty soon. Let's have a look at some of the highlights from the game against the Bulldogs. To Brown. The Bulldogs just getting excited at the moment. They're looking good. Straight up the middle. Two options there. They spoil each other. Harrison and Garlic. Now Harrison's in trouble. A handball from Walker. Crowed in there. He's got a man in space. It's Farmer. And he takes the mark. 35 out. Can go. Does. Sets sail for home and pops it through for Fremantle's first. Walker. Handball to Carr. He spears it inboard. Two options. One of them's Hazelby and he takes the mark. 12th touch for Paul Hazelby. He's a sweeping handball over the top to Simmons. He runs to 55 metres out from goal. And from right on the 50, he loads up, goes for home. That is a fantastic kick from Troy Simmons. He's popped it through for his first goal. Now, we know it was a very tough game against the Bulldogs, and because of that, we've had a few injuries come out of the game. Polak, Jones, Farmer and Grover all up for a test this week. But the good news is it looks like we're going to get most of them back. Fingers crossed. This week, we'll have a look at the player of the week. Well, I don't know how many players of the week he's had so far, but Paul Medhurst is going to have a lot more in his career. Don't worry about that. He took an absolute screamer in the first quarter. Let's have a look at it right now. This man in the fence, Matthew Crop. So just instead, Simmons decides to go short and set something up to Seager. He's been busy early in this opening term. Six possession, high kick. Oh! Inside 50. Brilliant mark taken by Medhurst. Grant at one end, Medhurst at the other. And he'll go back and kick from about 35 metres out. The mark of the season may have lasted 10 minutes. What a mark. Well, we're down here at Kalis. Uh, very fortunate to have the development manager and runner in Lee Walker and an ex-Collingwood player, so we can get a preview on the blockbuster this week. And the whiz down here to get some health food into him. Uh, boys, thanks for coming down. No worries, Scotty. Please do, mate. Now, uh, I think we've got some food happening. Some You made the order, didn't you? So yeah. Some healthy food for us, no yeah. doubt. Go for it. I'll just throw it there, mate. No worries. Lee, you just organised Jeff's for him. I, want it. I think that'll do you there, Wiz, all right? We'll give him a lemon. Back. And the rest is we'll for you and I, mate. Thank you. It's good being a fast player. Mate, you played at Collingwood, 95 to 99. What can you tell us about the club? Oh, look, uh, we'll just take your hand off the leg, will It's a great club. It's a great club with a lot of tradition. And, uh, you know, we sort of we started over yesterday to watch the game against Melbourne. And, you know, it was a fantastic sort of experience for a lot of the younger boys. Um, and uh, it's going to be a great, uh, great challenge for, for us to try and get over him this week. So I'm sure Wiz is looking forward to it. Now, mate, before we go any further, he's got to stand up. Let's have a look at these shorts. <laughs> Let's have a look. Tell us about these shorts. Well, they're a, uh, if you can see, not too bad. They're actually a basketball uh, basketball shorts that uh, my dad bought for me. So thank you very much, Dad. What's he like, mate? He's, he's a runner. He's had to run messages out to you so far this year. Does yeah. he do his job well? Oh, he, he goes all right, he goes all right. Uh, I think Springer does a better job than him, who's the other runner down there. But, um, no, I think he actually changes the messages as well because um, I don't think Chris swears uh, when he when he talks to the guys on the <laughs> phone. So he changes uh, it around, comes out, adds a bit of swearing in. No doubt. <laughs> I don't add any swear words at all, mate. To be honest. What's <laughs> the best message that he's had to give so far to you? Uh, the best one so far is, I think we were playing Carlton. Cartman, I've actually just gone down to the goal square to have a bit of a breather after running around the midfield. He's come out and his, his exact words were, get back, <laughs> get back up into the midfield or you're off. So I'm tired, mate, after running around in the midfield, I've got this message, so I've quickly had to go back, run around the midfield and uh, I bl actually blew up, so thanks very much. Mr. Walker. I think, I, I think I said it with a bit deeper voice than that, mate, didn't I? <laughs> hey, you got <laughs> You better uh, get off. Hey, what about the Wiz? Luke? What's he like? Oh, uh, look, he, he, he does his job pretty well. He's good, he's good fun around the club. He, uh, he's, you know, he sort of added a bit of excitement to the, to the group. And, uh, you know, you can see what, by what he's wearing. He, uh, he, he sort of, <laughs> he, he livens things up a little bit. So uh, he's trying to grow a bit of a, a bit of a gaiety at the moment, which is, a, which is a poor effort for a beard, I think, at the moment. But, uh, <laughs> I'm getting there. He, he's getting there. He's getting there. <laughs> What about Collingwood? Guys, you're both, both very experienced in the AFL. Uh, what do you expect from them this week? Blockbuster game, big crowd. What are their fans like? What are you expecting? Very vocal, their, their crowd. Obviously, I've been in Melbourne playing against them, and uh, they certainly get really get behind their, behind their team.
team and no doubt uh, there'll be probably half and half there, you know, Frio and Collingwood supporters and uh, no doubt they'll be very vocal on the weekend. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, every time, you know, I came over to play over in Perth, you know, Collingwood just dr seems to drag people along and it's just it's such a fantastic club to be part of that uh, people want to support the club. It's, uh, it's like sort of Fremantle, it's just got such a great tradition behind it that, uh, you know, people just love going to the footy to watch, you know, two teams like, like this, for this weekend that uh, when, you know, two traditional clubs are going to be playing each other. So, it's, uh, you know, they'll pull 5,000 people along this week and hopefully we'll be able to crack the 30,000 mark, which would be great. Well, as we're halfway through the year, I want your opinions. Who's been the best player? If we were to take a fairest and best poll at the moment, who would be winning? Me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hey. uh, I suppose you probably can't go past uh, probably Matty Pavlich. Uh, he's, he's been great for us uh, this year. He's really come on and uh, leaps and bounds. So I think he'd probably be heading it at the moment. Lee, you agree with that? Yeah, I think Pav's had a fantastic year to date. I think uh, probably, I mean, Peter Bell's obviously the, the other standout, but um, you know, Pav has been you know, exceptional. And, uh, mate, I think if this bloke had a bit more of this sort of stuff, I think he'd be up there as well. But, uh, it, uh, the belly's been fantastic the way he's not only led the club, but the way he sort of carries himself out in the field as well. So, it's probably a bit of a draw between those two. One other, a guy that was picked up number 55 in the draft, Paul Medhurst. What's your impressions of him? Well, about his hair or...? <laughs> whatever, mate, whatever. You're not happy with his hair. Oh, I'll let Wiz comment on his hair. No, mate, he's, uh, he's actually been real good for us. Um, he's created, you know, a number of goals, opportunities for the rest of the forwards. Uh, he's also another option up there, and he's been playing really good. So if you can continue that and keep on developing, that's another avenue to goal for us. All right, last one, boys. Uh, who's the best golfer out of both of you? I'd have to say you. You reckon, mate? <laughs> well, boys, what we've got coming up now is a package for Port Kennedy or Golf Club Kennedy Bay. It's a great, great course. I'm sure it would test both of you boys, and uh, it'd be pretty close. But uh, we'll have a look at that one now. Thanks, boys. Cheers, Scotty. Now, this magazine is the Bible to many golfers. This course we're standing on at the moment, Golf Club Kennedy Bay, was ranked number one in Western Australia. We're very lucky to have Catherine Kirby, the Sales and Promotions Coordinator from Golf Club Kennedy Bay. Catherine, great course. You've got some deals going at the moment. We certainly do. We have a Tree Links Pass valued at $50, entitling players to 20% off their golf. And also we have an Annual Playing Pass, which is valued at $1,300, and entitles anyone to free golf for a year and free use of the driving range, along with being a member of the IMG Sports Club. What's so special about Golf Club Kennedy Bay? It is the only True Link style golf course in Western Australia. There you have it. You haven't played golf in WA until you've come to this course. Get down here, footy supporters. It is an absolute gem. The Players Grill with Daniel Haynes. Your best mate at the club? Uh, Scotty Thornton. Your worst habit? Uh, bottom of fingernails. Your favourite drink? Coke. Favourite movie? Uh, Braveheart. Smelly's teammate? Uh, Jeff Armour. Titled Football Idol? Gary Ablett. Most admired opponent? Uh, Andrew McLeod. Most feared opponent? Andrew McLeod. Funniest teammate? Uh, Luke Toyer. Your dream date? Liz Hurley. Your girlfriend's name? Uh, Chantel. Your nickname and why? Uh, Stinger. I don't know why other boys just call me it. What car do you drive? Uh, Hyundai. Do you play any other sport? Uh, no. Just footy, mate. Funniest moment at the club? No, I haven't really had much yet. Any? Your worst roommate? Uh, Simon Eastall. And your best pick-up line? Oh, I'm too shy. I don't really have any. Thank you. Daniel Haynes. Thanks, mate. Well, we're very fortunate to have assistant coach Kelly O'Donnell here. Kelly, uh, mate, halfway through the year, still struggling to win away, as a lot of sides are. What's the secret? I think 16 sides in the AFL would like to know that secret, Scotty, because uh, the stats are showing that everyone is struggling to uh, win away from home. Uh, the, you go into each game away and try and do the same things you're doing at home, but uh, there is a there's a magic formula, formula there that we haven't quite uh, uh, got hold of yet, but we're endeavouring to... Uh, to make uh, inroads into that area and I think as we become a better side now young uh, players become more experienced that will look after itself. Well you just mentioned basically that we're not the only side struggling to win away is it because the competition's so even do you think? Yeah I think so yeah look it, it, there's uh, it's the comp this year is uh, is very even uh, any one of uh, a number of sides uh, at the top
top of the ladder are really uh, you know, uh, showing probably premiership favouritism at the moment. And uh, there's a, a whole group of sides under, under them are vying for spots in the eight. So it's, it's really even. And, um, you know, the home wins are, are vital to everyone because uh, well, the way the pattern is that uh, not too many are getting over the line when they travel. Now, home wins are vital this week, a blockbuster, possibly the closest thing some of these players will play to a finals game uh, at this point in their career. Yeah, it is. We took uh, the entire uh, group that played against the Western Bulldogs to the MCG to experience uh, what a big crowd atmosphere is like uh, against Collingwood and Melbourne, and we gave us a chance to have a look at Collingwood. They're in good form. But, uh, yeah, we'd encourage um, all the Freo fans to get along to uh, Subiaco Oval and really and get us that record crowd and uh, get, get right behind us because this will be a blockbuster and we're playing uh, one of the big Victorian clubs that are in good form, so it's a great test for us. Now, mate, you're quite a quiet, unassuming sort of bloke. For all the people out there and all our supporters, how would you describe Kelly O'Donnell? How would I describe Kelly O'Donnell? Uh, that's a good question. You might have to ask my wife, Scotty. <laughs> well answered, mate. Thanks, Kel. Good to have you on the show. Well, there's been plenty happening around the club this year. Let's take a look at what's happening this week on club calendar. Football may be a week-by-week -week proposition, but some weeks loom larger in the imagination than others. And for Fremantle, this is one of them. The blockbuster v Collingwood, 12.40pm this Sunday. After the Collingwood match, the members-only function in the Bill Walker room will get underway about 45 minutes after the final siren. 80 minutes after the siren, most of the team and coaching staff will be getting down to the Newport Hotel. Get down there, show your support, everybody's welcome. Next week, the Bank West People's Night will be back in action. Get down there Tuesday night, 4.30pm onwards. Great chance to get there and support the players. The Bankman Auction is coming up. It's going to be on August the 3rd at Challenge Stadium. Its success depends largely on the quality of goods and services donated by club supporters. So make sure if you can help, you contact the club this week. Well, as another Frio show comes to a close down here in Fishing Boat Harbour, I'll leave you with this thought. The Blockbuster versus Collingwood this week. Eddie, Mick and all the Collingwood boys, it's going to be a cracker of a game. Make sure you're there. If you're having a look at it on TV, Sunday, 1.40pm Western Time. Other than that, we'll see you next week on the Frio show on Fox Footy Channel. See you then.
Mark Richardson here. Uh, great game yesterday by the boys. I've got Richard Cole here. Played his second game yesterday. Kicked a couple of goals, Coley, did you? Yeah. Well done, mate. We'll uh, come back to you a bit later for uh, a quick interview. But uh, for now, a few highlights from yesterday's game. Lakeland, Topo, out of danger. Magos been busy over the top, running it now, Lecuria, Lockyer. Lee and Charlie run on his hammer. They do beautifully to get it to Brody Holland. Look forward. Leon Davis. Broadbridge does enough. No. Tarrant around the body. Tarrant around the body. It doesn't come better than this. That's their second. Back onto it. The kid goes. Over the top. Lecuria. Too easy for the pies off half back. And they will set up out of defence. Blakeland drills a pass. Holland on the Johnson now. Collingwood on the move. Through the middle, changing direction, great kick, Davis has set, chance at ground level, second bite, normally good, oh, chance now, Didak, lines it up, and drills it, he drills another for the pies. I suppose running straight at the ball, Alice will always give a contest, Buckley's wrapped up, over, over the ball, Powell, they need him running with the ball, Burns, Collingwood into attack again, Long, Josh Fraser, Nicholson wrestling, Tarrant, oh.
special space and he'll cut you up. Does he cut the demons up here? No. On a score.
they didn't go particularly well last week, and uh, let, let's hope uh, they struggle to retain their, to re regain their confidence. And they've got a uh, pretty potent midfield, uh, good young brigade. Uh, how, how do you see uh, we'll be able to counter-attack their, their uh, strengths? Yeah, I think, think the trick for them, they do have quite a few. It's not just uh, the, the one, two or three, it's a, a fair range of them. So I think, um, and Mick plans very well for these things. Obviously, he'll have a plan for making sure that we keep fresh legs on the field. Um, and I think that's a, the good sign that we've had this year. We've had a lot more people been doing the work in the... Uh, very loud. <laughs> that could be Frio now spying on us. Um, but we've had uh, quite a few extra blokes doing a lot of hard work in the midfield. Blokes like Burnsy who haven't played all that much um, in the last year or two. So I reckon we'll have the strength there. And, and being able to rest Burnsy and uh, Bucks to a degree on the weekend will probably help us. So uh, I reckon that's the trick. As you said, the midfield is the real trick. Uh, and I see the uh, Williamstown side actually got beaten in the end on the weekend. Was there any uh, good players coming out of that game? Yeah, it was an interesting game. I thought we nearly played well enough to win it. Uh, it was a bit disappointing. But um, certainly uh, Heath Scotland, we're talking about the midfielders, he played particularly well. So uh, he'll give himself a real chance to, uh, to, to get up for this week. Um, um, but we're, I guess overall we were a bit disappointed. Uh, it was a game against Henry and we probably should have won, had, had enough of the footy. But it was pretty cool down there, so uh, it was a bit disappointing. Yeah, um, Scotty Cummings, how did he go? Uh, he kicked uh, three, I think. Um, was good on the lead. Probably didn't get as much of the footy as he would have liked. Um, but um, but he'd, he'd, be, he'd be very much in consideration for this week, though. And uh, the injured players, have we got uh, many injuries from uh, yesterday's game? Uh, I think uh, Brody Holland might be a bit sore, but um, apart from that, I think we've come out of it pretty well. So, um, touch wood, um, injuries haven't been a, haven't had a big impact. Apart, um, now that you're back in, on deck and a few of the guys who missed a bit earlier on, uh, we're in reasonably good shape. And uh, Jared Malloy and Nick Davis, they look like um, coming up this week or still uh, still a couple away, do you think? Well, apart from those injured blokes... <laughs> I know Jared would be very keen to play. Uh, I think we, we would have to make a judgment of what's best for him for the rest of the season. And I would imagine Nick would probably miss another one with a week off uh, um, after this game. So yeah, we'll have to, probably have to make do without them, I would think. OK, thanks for your time, Neil. Thanks, Richard. OK, Magpie fans, that about wraps up this edition of Black and White TV. Don't forget you can catch us on the uh, Fox Footy Channel next Sunday. We'll play the Dockers. And uh, hopefully we can uh, go into the break with a win under our belts. See you. He keeps it in play, but it's only Magpie Jumpers there. Is this the greatest mark of all time? Okay. For the weak position on the member stand side. Oh, just a weak go! Judge for yourself with Fox Footy Channel's unrivaled lineup of the greatest moments in football history. From the current to the classic, there's only one place where the legends of the game get a run every week. And have a look down here, there's a fight on before the match. Extraordinary scenes at the MCG. Fox Footy Channel.
Subiaco level for more action from round 12 in the AFL competition this afternoon, of course, Collingwood in town to take on the Dockers. Dennis Committee alongside Jason Bennett. And Jason, the House of Pain. Can Collingwood become the first to win here? They love the House of Pain over here, don't they, Dennis? Well, the Magpies have been in fantastic form. They've won seven of their last eight. They'd come here without any fears this afternoon. They've played fearless football all season. Huge game for Fremantle, though. You mentioned they had a disappointing loss last week. They've got to bounce back this afternoon. You talk about the Magpies' record. Let's take a look at Michael Malthouse. He seems to be doing it again. Back in 1992, his third season with the West Coast Eagles, they won won the Premiership. They went to the finals in 90 and 91. Collingwood not quite there yet. They haven't played in the finals under Malthouse, but they get their chance, one would suspect, this year. 2002, third on the ladder with a record of 8 and 3. And of course, last week, as they come onto the ground behind Nathan Buckley, who spent some time on the bench last week, the forward line function. They've been at 19 goals. Chris Tarrant got seven of them. Out they come. Steve McKee playing his 50th game. And he's been a valuable acquisition since coming across from the Tigers. As I mentioned, conditions terrific for football today. I talked about the finals. Obviously, the forwards need to do better because so far, Collingwood really have predicated their success on their defence. They have. It's a typical Mick Malthouse trade, isn't it? We saw it at Footscray at West Coast and now at Collingwood. You see there their defence ranked number one in the competition at the moment, which suggests when you look at the other end of the ground, it may be won or lost in Fremantle's mm. forward line this afternoon. Can the Dockers kick enough goals to win the game? Could be won or lost in the opening term as well. First quarters have been very unkind as far as the Fremantle Dockers are concerned. First of all, we'll take a look at the defence as far as Collingwood are concerned because it's all about pressure. It is, and it's some of the lesser lights. Uh, Wakeland, Prestige, Como, Lecuria, Cloak, those sort of guys are all having fantastic years and they work the ball hard out of defence. They really do run hard through the midfield and if you can get someone of the calibre of Nathan Buckley on the end of it, it makes life pretty comfortable for Fraser and Taron up forward. They tend to do that. They get the ball in the hands of the right player. Ah, as if on cue, here he is, Nathan Buckley. And that sort of finish really does help. Then they've got the marking forwards. The forwards, as I say, need to do better. And back to those opening terms for the Dockers. Fremantle yet to win one this season. It's incredible. They've conceded twice as many goals as they've kicked. We were at Optus Oval last week. They were going OK against the Bulldogs. Just took the foot off in the last three and a half minutes of the opening term. Conceded three quick goals. And essentially, that was the end of the contest. Here come the Dockers on this Subi. Just the one loss this season here at Subiaco Oval against their crosstown rivals, the West Coast Eagles, in round one, but they've been faultless ever since. Certainly an improved team under Chris Connolly, and they break the banner. Out they come for this afternoon's clash. Interesting battle, Troy Simmons against Steve McKee, both of them playing their 50th game this afternoon. There's Troy across from Melbourne, just behind him, Luke McFarlane. And in the foreground, we've got the anchor. They will play on each other this afternoon, Steve McKee and Troy Simmons. That should be interesting. And they've both been really handy pickups, haven't they? Absolutely. In the early days when Collingwood got McKee and Richmond got Clinton King, Collingwood fans were feeling a little bit of grief, but McKee's really started to blossom in the last 12 months. So we're set to go at the House of Pain. We've got Collingwood up against the Fremantle Dockers. Ah, yes, the anchor. Off it comes. Will that be the key to success this afternoon? We're about to find out. Back with all of the action right after this. Oh. 
Harvey Norman's half yearly clearance sale is on now. Pay just $15 for a factory operated toothbrush from Sunbeam with bonus cleaner and tip. Spend $500 or more and pay nothing for 15 months. Conditions apply. See store for details. Harvey Norman's half yearly clearance sale. Don't miss it. The internet. It's great for sending emails and finding information. Now there's something exciting from Telstra that lets you do that and more much faster. It's called broadband. It's a different type of internet connection that's up to 30 times faster than normal. It lets you do all your day-to-day -day stuff a lot quicker. Pictures and movies that took ages to download can now just take seconds. Impressive. Plus, you can be on the phone while your computer is still connected to the internet. Telstra Big Pond Broadband starts from $54.95 a month once you're connected. Great value at under $2 a day. Call Telstra now. Doug is a man who enjoys the finer things in life. The three Fs. Food, football and making love. <laughs> Tune in and meet his Queen of Queens wife, Carrie. Okay, being on your feet instead of your ass, not enough progress. Now you try getting up off my ass. And his crazy father-in-law, Arthur. In your face! <laughs> He's happy. Fox 8 premiere episodes. Whoa, what a rush! King of Queens, Thursday at 9, Fox 8. He's an inspirational player. You don't have to barrack for St Kilda to appreciate Rob Harvey.
that's going to determine their future uh, today, I think. They have to get their hands on the ball and uh, get plenty of supply to their forward line. The umpires this afternoon, we've seen one of them. The other two, Allen and Margetts. 50 games for Steve McKee. Opening siren, big roar around Subiaco Oval. Will the juggernaut roll on? Or will Fremantle continue to win at home? Down to Burns, who kicks inside the attacking 50. Fraser slipped over. Almost slipping over down there as well with Simmons. He's going to push in the back to Buckley. I think it was. He'll get the free kick. That was interesting because there was a rugby game played last night. They put some paint, I think, on the surface. And both players really struggled for their footing. And so did Buckley, as it turned out. Yes, but the push was there. What uh, was interesting, though, Troy Simmons starting in defence on Fraser. And we saw Collingwood quickly get the ball from the middle of the ground. So they are, they are trading off their best centre, Ruckman, for uh, a, a tall defender. Nathan Buckley, who picked up 46 possessions and three Brownlow votes, as you'd expect, round two against the Dockers last season. And that's a very good way to start. Yes, it was an impressive shot at goal and a good way to start. When you're interstate, you've just got to get on the ball early. Here's the matchup we're talking about, Troy Simmons on Fraser. He did it quite well, Simmons. He didn't buckle at the knees and a good dive there from the captain of Collingwood drawing the free kick. Great start to the Magpies. So the Collingwood skipper gets the opening goal of the game. Fremantle yet to have an effective disposal. The Magpies have three and a goal. Back in the middle. McKee again against Longmuir. McKee got the tap down. Some heavy work in there from Cole. Free kick going the way of James Walker. Taken high with that bump. Fans calling for a 50 metre. And now they get it. Rupert Patheris hanging onto the football. Umpire gave him a warning to give it back. It took too long. And now James Walker will be brought deep inside the 50 metre arc for Fremantle. Ferris claims his case. Some confusion as to who the free kick was going to. So it'll be James Walker. Opportunity to kick his third goal for season 2002 and square the ledger in the opening stages of this game. 48 metres out. Pokes at the kick. It's high. It's wide. It's ugly. Didn't quite get there. And the mark taken on the defensive line by Clement. Little handball out to Johnson. Opportunity for the Magpies to work it round the outer side. Good run out of defence. Johnson again around the wing. Diving mark in front taken by Betheris. Good pressure there from Seagat. Betheris around the outer wing. Fraser is target. Simmons beat him to the ball but couldn't control it. Spills over and out for a throw in. And I guess the key matchup for uh, the Fremantle Dockers in midfield is Peter Bell. He's being picked up by Scott Burns who is back in good form and uh, uninjured having a big impact on Collingwood's season. Fraser and Simmons wrestle, it comes to Walker. Little handball into space for the Dockers. McManus to run onto it. Scotland and Buckley try to shut him down. Good quick hands, Hazelby to Walker. Ends up coming back to James Walker and he'll kick it towards the 54 Fremantle. Medhurst has the front position, it's punched away by Clement. Picked up by Presta Giacomo. Wide sweeping handball, partly intercepted by Cunningham, but eventually it's Freeborn who takes the Magpies out of defence. Chance for Cole on the other side wing then. Out against the boundary line. Good looking player. Awkward half volley for Fraser. Tackled immediately by Walker. Down he went. Gets a hand pass away. Still a chance for the Magpies. Missed out there by Scotland. McManus to Hazelby. Short one. Cunningham. Interesting. Clever as it worked out. Then the fumble. Fumbled his own hand pass. Son of a gun. Across to Walker. Walker boots it down towards half forward. High bouncing ball taken by Burns. Stood up in the tackle. Presta Giacomo. Clement. The dangerous pass, man on, Scotland, inside the centre square, chips out wide, juggled attempt at the mark by Davis, still he goes, beats it back, Lockyer, Rocker comes on a lead, the kick goes in that direction, and he marks in front of Pavlich. Should be a duel to save of that one. Anthony Rocker, short, Lockyer, former East Fremantle player, about 75 metres from goal. Tarrant actually Tarrant fell over now he comes on a lead meantime he goes 
is in short Lecuria. Barely the 15. Scotland wants it. Scotland, well, and he continued to run. Scotland was on. That was ignored eventually. Lecuria floats one down towards full call and Fraser. Well, it's a good looking setup in the Collingwood forward line. They have got the three tools down there in Rocker, Fraser, and Tarrant. And they were prepared to isolate Fraser at that time with everybody away from them. And they just backed his height. He just, you can see there, he just uh, popped it up in the air. Fraser took the front position and Troy Simmons was outpointed for the second time this afternoon. Josh Fraser, wonderful young talent, 20 metres out, puts it through. Pauling would have got the flying start. for the Dockers and that is if the supply comes into their forward line their key forwards are in just such good form Fraser kicked four last week Tarrant kicked seven and Rocker whilst he didn't have his uh, best match last week has been in very good form right throughout the season keeping it nice and open for them they must restrict the supply in midfield free out with to remain competitive Opening two goals to the Magpies. Possessions 22 to 12 in favour of Collingwood, getting plenty of the ball early on. McKee got the tap straight down the throat of Lecuria, but it's picked up by Longmuir. Justin Longmuir. Kick it inside 50. Medhurst versus Clement. Medhurst goes to ground up high, pulls out a free kick. It's going to Fremantle. And Paul Medhurst holding on in the contest against James Clement. And Medhurst will have the chance to register Fremantle's opening score. And they've set up uh, Fremantle with their two small forwards along the full forward line. That's Medhurst and Jeff Farmer. And it's a pretty dangerous couple. This kid has got exceptional talent. We haven't seen his best. He's only a, uh, a youngster in football terms. Uh, but already what, from what we've seen, he has got exceptional talent and he is going to be a big name for this club uh, over the years. Pick number 56 in last year's draft. 12 goals, 8 for the season, Paul Medhurst. Opportunity to kick Fremantle's first here. Just steady the ship. 40 metres out. Kick on its way. He likes it. So does the goal umpire. Goal to Fremantle. Medhurst gets his first. It's two straight to one straight here at Subiaco. We've gone seven and a quarter minutes. Seen a little bit of it, this kid. Uh, in just his short history up against James Clement. He'll be pretty... He'll be pretty keen to uh, show his best footy today, but uh, he's a very talented player, young Medhurst. He's got a lot of tricks. If he keeps his uh, feet on the ground, he is going to be a devastating small forward and probably a, a devastating midfielder when his chance occurs. The cunning one gets the goal. Rucks go at it. Longview knocks it down. Spills wide. Hand pass from Cole to Scotland. This ball goes out towards the boundary. Pitches on its point. Stays in. Rover did nicely. Now across the line. Boundary throw in. Out of side. Matthew Carr, number nine. Spent some time with the Magpies. He's become a good player for Fremantle. Tossed in. Fraser. Fingertips to it. Scrambled out of the pack. Lecuria in trouble. Carr did nicely. Backed out. Kicked up towards the wing. Lockyer in front. Shins it towards the boundary line. Could have been pushed in the back. The theorist. Looping hand pass over the top. Pressed to Giacomo. Nimble. Comes away from the wing. Pumps it down towards the pocket. And Josh Fraser once again. He played well last Monday. He started well here. He just looks a little bit too mobile and nimble for Troy Simmons. And uh, already I think the alarm bells would be ringing for Chris Connolly. Sharp angle. Josh Fraser will kick from right on the 50. It's coming around too early. Behind. Misses near side. I think if it was a foot race in a straight line, Troy Simmons would be able to go quite comfortably with his uh, opponent Fraser. But Fraser appears to just be able to spin on a thruppany bit uh, a fair bit more easily than Troy Simmons. And I think he will beat him for mobility. So Pavlich with a kick in. It's given the hurry up by the umpire. Decides to thump it long outside the 50. Long mule to go for Fremantle. Freeborn with a well-timed punch. It's read at ground level and the Dockers are away through Simmons. Kick missed its target. On the bounce to Crow. Little handball to Brown. He pumps it inside the 50. Farmer on the bounce. Comes charging out to Jeffrey Farmer. 60 metres from goal. Tries to flip it over the top to Cunningham. He'll run onto it from 40 metres out. He can measure it. Lines it up and puts it across the face of goal. Despite a spectacular...
spectacular effort from Medhurst. It is through for a behind. Well, he had the time, but uh, couldn't quite complete. But that was a good sign for the Dockers, the way they brought the ball from defence. Nice kick out from Pavlich, playing his 50th game. You've got to mention on their banner, their run through. It said a Pav beats a pie any day. <laughs> well, he's got the opportunity to prove that. Lockie with the kick in. Burns to run onto it. Bell, right with him, takes him to the line, and we will have a throw in. Josh Fraser, the more of you see him up forward, Jarrett, the more comfortable he looks up there, Josh Fraser. As maybe not a ruckman as we th first thought when he was recruited, he may end up being a key forward. Well, he's, you know, he's got the size, he's also got the intelligence to do that. He's a beautiful finisher. Burns from the congestion, dribbles along the grounds, gains some territory for his side, dribbles over the line in front of Rocker. that their key forwards have got to lead up. They're starting deep in defence. They're interchanging. Fraser's going back to the goal square. Tarrant pushing up, rotating it round. McKee over the footy, trying to get it out. The theorist, likewise. Lecuria going nowhere. Slipped. And a bounce. There's the time remaining on the scoreline. Collingwood by six points. At the opening bounce, the attendance, 30,386. Great for the Dockers. Michael Malthouse back at Subi. Doing wonders with the Magpies. Burns, McKee, now Buckley. Spears the ball inside the 50. And his best effort, Parker tracks it back towards the boundary line. Out it goes. It'll be tossed in. Right full forward for Collingwood. Who lead in the early going. 2-1 to 1-1. One, one, one. Bear in mind they're kicking with the breeze. That's quite a strong breeze. Down the ground. Just directly. Thrown in. Inside the 50 then, Tarrant is there, so too Fraser. Simmons goes after it close to the line. Davis can't keep it in. It's a stalemate on the members' side of the ground. It's the Magpies by six points. In clearance into the season, Collingwood are ranked third, Fremantle 15. So the Dockers are going to have to be very careful this afternoon around the stoppages. The likes of Buckley, Burns, Lecuria and Fraser. Very adept at taking away from the clearances. Over the back of the contest from Simmons' hand, went to Tarrant. Mercuria, Leon Davis from the 50, got through a couple of tacklers from 45 metres out, lines it up and kicks a beauty! Leon Davis kicks the Magpies third, an exciting player, just found another gear. We hope you're enjoying it right around Australia, live and uninterrupted on Fox Footy. Davis is first, the Magpies have three. Well, you couldn't help but enjoy it. Uh, stop plays are danger signs for the top clubs, and Collingwood have uh, moved into that bracket. He was left unattended, Leon, and uh, in the words of Mike Sheehan, the most exciting man in Victoria. Well, he's exciting WA at the moment. Jason alerted you to the likelihood of something happening there at that set play, and they were queuing up for it, Collingwood, back towards the middle. Cole, well done. Burns inside the centre square. Not a wonderful kick, but accurate enough. Tarrant couldn't hang on. On his shoulder, Kurt still he goes. Tracks it, collides with a teammate, Simmons. Oh, that was terrible. It comes across to Davis, who kicks his second in the space of a minute. Well, a terrible mistake there by Steve Coops. He's, uh, he was the fumbler, and his man bobbed up with the, the goal, and uh, he kicked his second, as you said. There's the clash. I think it was with Troy Simmons. Not a good body to be clashing with, and he's coming from the ground with the blood rule. In fact, both players are coming from the ground with the blood rule. Hayes will be back on for Coops, and it looks like uh, it will be Luke McFarlane on for his first run. Another tall player at it. Gee, that's a pretty darn, pretty dastardly split of the eye there. And uh, Well, great to see McFarlane back on the ground, a guy that uh, whose career looked as if it was going to be over, destroyed by osteitis pubis, but he's got oh. another opportunity here, and there's the clash of the heads. So danger signs now for the Dockers. Another sluggish opening for them. Longmuir tried to work in heavy traffic. Hazelby was taken high. Didn't have control of the ball. He'll get the free kick. So Hazelby, fourth possession for him. Swings it wide to the outer side. The Dockers trying to get something going. Some run through McFarlane. His first kick for Fremantle. Inside the 50. Medhurst is his target. It was mauled by Clement. Ground level. Grover. Wrapped up by Burns. Medhurst was just looking to the umpire. He was trying to find him to give him a spray. <laughs> And in the end, we'll have a bounce. Just got to find more of the footy, Fremantle. At the moment, they've got uh, half their side haven't got a possession. And only uh, 
what, six players have got more than two possessions. Peter Bell yet to uh, get his hands on the footy. And Troy Cook also. The two usual suspects. There's Cook on the bottom of that pack. Going nowhere. We'll have a bounce. Total possession is 25 to 40, and Collingwood have been relatively direct with their play, which indicates just how supreme they've been early in this match. So inside the 50 for the Dockers, McKee to Richardson on the overlap to Scotland. Brings it towards the member side. Not much to kick to, so he dribbles it along the ground. Set Lockyer a task. There were four to beat. And Tarka Lockyer put his body on the line and found it. Found the boundary line. As we head down there now, here's Mark Reddings. Yes, Jason, a fair bit of urgency amongst the Dockers' better coast. Troy Simmons has been taken from the ground, perhaps to receive a couple of stitches, while Stephen Coops remains in the dugout and again being attended to by a couple of Fremantle Dockers officials. Boundary throw in. Richardson works in front. The anvil behind him. Wakeland, too easy. Lockyer. Across the ground, Cole leads in the race out there, tracked by Grover, Cole for a kick, no, play on, the umpire, not far from the Cole face, diving in there is Grover, ball still in there, is that holding it? Well, the Courier thinks not, he jumps on it, and we'll have a ball up. Cunningham off the ground, 10.20, till quarter time, Collingwood 25 to 7, Wakeland, Burns, nicely worked, under pressure, Lockyer, went back looking for Burns, who took it off Longmuir, they wrestled to the ground, ball up inside the attacking 50 for the Dockers, who could desperately do with a goal right here. So the inside 50, 6-4, Jared, but Collingwood look so much more dangerous when they go inside their forward 50. Yeah, they've got the power forwards and they're uh, in touch at the moment. So McKee had it and lost it, Cook, it's a handball. Ineffective. Freeborn there. Slung in the tackle by Farmer. Play on's the call. It comes to Ben Johnson. Tries to run away around the outer side from Haynes. Dribbles a kick around the boundary. Tarrant up against Parker. The ball spills out for a throw in. Leading stat getter Scott Burns on the ground with six. Five for Tark and Lockyer. Four each to McKee in Scotland. For the Dockers. Walker's had five. Hazelby four. There's Hazelby going for number five. Won't get the opportunity. Wakeland wraps him up. We'll have a bounce. So the margin is 18 points. Just under nine and a half minutes remaining in this opening term. Fremantle have to hang tough. They can't afford to concede another goal or two. They'll find themselves in the same dilemma as last week against the Bulldogs. Cook. High kick inside 50. McKee went the punch from behind. A ground level chance here for Fremantle. Hazelby to Haynes from just inside the 50. Neat little left foot pass. Under the chest of Jeff Farmer. Well, they got the opportunity because Trent Crowe was prepared to put his body on the line and get in front of the pack. He created this spillage, and then they had uh, players, numbers of players, running at the fall of the ball. They finally got the ball to Jeff Farmer, and uh, well, he gets another opportunity. Second touch for Farmer. Kick on its way. Didn't look good off the boot. Started out to the right hand side and finished there. Threw for behind. The Dockers 128, Collingwood a 4125. The margin is 17 points. Approaching time on in this opening term. Lock yet. Whoops. False start. Now he goes with precision too. This is Wakeland. Looking for Buckley on the other side wing. Finds his target. It's a magnificent kick. Buckley. Not so that one. Hazelby. Lays it back. McFarlane. Forward of half-back, kicks down towards half-forward, Longmuir, knocked away by Wakeland, McKee had it, lost it, Wakeland goes again, digs it out, Lockyer gets a hand pass away, Scotland, Lecuria bursting through the middle, kicking down towards half-forward, yeah. Tarrant, good place. All round, Tarrant for space, Rocker, well done Hazelby, got back to the contest, Bell, his first possession, comes out wide, Left half back for the Dockers. Suddenly, it's gone up in tempo this game. Parker towards the wing. One wonders why. Brown came up outnumbered. Happy to get it across the boundary line. Marks around the ground. 12-3 to three in favour of Collingwood early in this game. They're just hitting their targets. The Dockers struggling to find theirs. Throw in. Fraser from behind. Got the tap down. Buckley rides the cook bump. Gave a little handball to Scotland. His was partly smothered. Goes again, Scotland. Well played. Got it to Burns. A kick to a one-on-one. -on -one. Anthony Rocker in front. At the back is Pavlich. They work off each other. Ball heads towards the line. And we'll call that a nil-all draw as they throw it in 10 metres around from the behind post. Jason Norris.
Marsh awaits his chance to come onto the ground. Look at uncontested possessions, 39 to 18 in favour of the Magpies. It's finding the ball and finding space, Collingwood at the moment. Over the back of the ruck contest. Cook. The tackle came from Leon Davis. Ball comes to Fraser. Dishes it out to Scotland. Scotland from 40 metres out. Across his body. Clever kick. Clever goal. The Magpies have five. And they've just been so impressive at ground level. The Curia Burns. Buckley, they're all getting the ball. He's Scotland also with plenty of it. In fact, he's had seven possessions. I think he's uh, running a little bit wide of Troy Cook at the present time. They've matched up uh, pretty well through the middle. Hayes will be doing quite well for the Fremantle Dockers with seven possessions, but he's the only one who's having an impact at ground level. Well, I felt it for a long time, actually. Heath Scotland is a real Subiaco-style player, and obviously Michael Malthouse shares that opinion. Getting plenty of the football this afternoon. Dangerous time for the Dockers approaching quarter time. Longmuir to knock it down. Chance for Cook wide of the pack. Sends the Dockers towards half forward. Haynes outmaneuvered down there by Freeborn. Fell in front showing great desperation. Haynes over the foot. He bounces to his feet. Robbed of it though. McKee in trouble. Got a hand pass away. Wakeland looping hand pass over the top. There he is again. Can't find the country at the moment as far as the Dockers are concerned. Collingwood finding him though. This is Buckley. Just forward of left half back. 5 1 1 2. Great start by the Magpies. More of the same for the Dockers. Dismal record in first quarters this season. Fraser. Lively. That's what they're so adept at doing now, Colling. We're just creating space for one of their tall forwards to run into. They're all athletic. They're all highly skilled, and Buckley was prepared to wait until uh, many of the ground-level players cleared the space, and one of the keys popped up. Fraser, intended for Tarrant, won't get to the contest. Loose ball at the back, Davis, the perfect foil, that pushed across the boundary line that time. Shane Wakelin off the ground. And Scott Burns has uh, gone to the goal square, which has effectively taken Peter Bell right from the play. There he is. He's sitting in the goal square. McKee had an open run at that run contest. Long with the late tackle. Umpire says holding the ball. In fact, he says he threw it. One arm pinned. And it's good strategy. If you can take Peter Bell away from the stop plays, well, then you're robbing the Dockers of one of their key drivers. Driver towards the wing. Walker explodes away from that contest. Has some space. Freeborn running with him, not at him. And he'll chip it inside the 50. And Haynes will take the mark. 45 out directly in front. Wanted to give it back. Man on the mark. Shut that down. And now he's going to go back and have to have a kick. He was very lucky, the boy. Yeah, I think both were lucky. Yeah, it could have been a play-on call and it could have been 50 metres. So Glenn Freeborn was just uh, walking the fine line. So Haynes, one goal in his six-game AFL career. The Dockers need this one from right on 50. Low trajectory kick, yeah. but it's straight. It is a goal. Inside the 50, Lucuria on the line. 
prevent Collingwood uh, from kicking a goal here. They really have defended well. La Curia, a long one, floats towards the opposite pocket yeah. rocker. Well, that is his stock and trade this season. 32 contested marks coming in. Next best in that category, 14. He runs around and kicks the goal for Collingwood. Yeah, I think it was a pretty important uh, passage of play there. It almost says to uh, your outside observers that no matter what Frio can do, they uh, had just up against a side with too many big guns. We saw a great interception from Hazelby, a good smother, a charge down. I think it was by the skipper in Peter Bell. Ball came out. They had a wall of players across the line. They kept pumping it in. Lecuria took it to the top of the goal square, and the tall forwards once again proved how damaging they could be. This time it was Rocker. Lost his man Pavlich. He was a good 15 metres away from him when the ball left Lecuria's boot. And he took a very clever mark. Cook wrapped up again. Here come the Magpies through Burns to Scotland. He kicks towards half forward. Cole at the back. Grover heads towards the line. Cole tries to keep it alive. Big Shepherd comes across from Batheris and it's out for a throw in. I think Justin Longmuir has got uh, a future as a ruckman. He's, he's very clever. But you just saw there the skills of Troy Simmons. He is one of the best tap ruckmen in the competition. And he's got a good relationship with his ground players. Fraser worked to the front, tapped it down. Cook tried to shark it. Haynes over the top of the ball. Buckley, tackle from Cook. Good harassment. Came to Bell. Bell runs hard off the wing. Kick. Kicks it inside 50 to spot up McManus. They'll take kick. the free kick. There's always going to be Mark or free kick against Tark and Lockyer. Lockyer made him earn it, but McManus gets the free kick. Just good use of the space behind. Peter Bell was uh, all over the strategy. As soon as he got the footy, he started charging. He knew McManus was going to run towards the goal, and it was a magnificent kick. Pretty good defence also by uh, the Collingwood player, but the umpire just pinged him. And whilst McManus isn't uh, the best shot at goal, his kicking has come a long way, I think, in the space of uh, 12 months. 6-6 six, six for the season for McManus. You see the angle on its way. It started out to the right. But still got a fair way to go. And through from behind. So a couple of set shots missed for the Dockers. They trial by 22 points on the verge of quarter time. Kick in with Tark and Lockyer. Uncertain of his options. False starts. Now he's got to go. Plays onto himself. And spots Scott Burns at defensive 45. Interesting that Frio are going man on man at the kick ins. So Burns. Chips it over the top to the lead of Fraser. Clears his contest with Simmons. His bell at the back. Starting to get busy in this game. His third touch. Thumps it inside the 50. Great penetration on the kick. Medhurst came charging out. At ground level, pressed to Giacomo. Farmer harasses him, but the ball spills to Scotland. To Lockyer. By hand to Clement. And the Magpies get it outside defensive 50. McGough takes a clever mark in front of his face. I think Paul Medhurst has got to work out that he is a ground level player and uh, taking mark of the year happens once in a lifetime you shouldn't be spoiling your key forwards when your job is to uh, be at the ground if Trent Crowe is prepared to create the crumb he shouldn't have to deal with his own man jumping into his back and have no crummer there at all if it's once in a lifetime for Medhurst that may have been last week tossed in wide of the pack taken by Lockyer his kick bounces down towards half forward. Seagate showed courage to go back after a taken high. He'll get the free kick. Seagate right half back. Norrish is on towards the middle. They need a late goal. Norrish gets a hand pass away. Well, set his teammate up. He wasn't moving too quickly in the middle there. That was McFarlane. Lockyer nicely done into the path of Scotland. Rover bearing down. Spills out the back. Socket off the deck by Cook. Cook tracks it out towards left half back to Bell. Bell short, intended for Haynes, recovered brilliantly, in trouble, heard the voice, got it to Walker. Norrish, he's on the wing, Dock is moving forward, Norrish to half forward, Medhurst, pushed out of it, well marked by Clement. All about strength, Clement had more of that time, Medhurst slightly off balance, here's Burns at centre half back in the bright sunshine at Subi. Counting down to quarter time, Magpies on top by 22 points, lovely kick. Richardson, Dockers will need to hold here. Richardson, clock down to 22 seconds. Rocker offers, goes in that direction. In fact, a little longer. And it will be a Docker free kick. And maybe now they'll run out 
the string to quarter time. Parker squares it. Norrish still inside his own defensive 50. Ambles away. Kicks up towards the wing and see. Get there's the siren for quarter time. Terrific start by Collingwood. Got the opening goals and when challenged, they've got more of the same. Quarter time at Subic, Collingwood 6-1, Fremantle a 2-3.
thought our, the, probably the defenders were just a little bit behind and they made the most of it. Must have hurt you losing Simmons and Coops during that quarter at the one time. Yeah, well, the, the boys are going to be uh, you know, showing a bit of versatility. I mean, if someone goes down in any, any other match, I mean, someone else is going to jump up. Luke's playing his first game for the club and hopefully he can do the job back there. Josh Fraser causing you plenty of problems as well. Oh, yeah, certainly. But the key for them is they kick their goals. We had two or three set shots and we're going to make them happen for us. Chris, thanks for that. Just before I go, boys, Shane Parker has gone back to the rooms during the quarter time break. He received a little nick to his nose and hopefully he's stitched up and ready to go for the second quarter. A play they can ill afford to lose. Collingwood's forward line looking pretty dangerous in that opening term, Jared. Six marks inside, 50 to two at the other end for Fremantle. Yeah, just having a look at the marks as we have a look at uh, Leon Davis slot one of his two goals. Fraser, Rocker and Taron have got seven marks between them. As you heard, six of those, that was a throw, six of those uh, in the forward 50. Crowd Long, Muir, Jay and Brown have uh, not taken a mark between them for the first quarter. And I think that is one of the big differences. Uh, the ball is going into their forward 50, but they just haven't been able to uh, take the pot shots, the easy shots from uh, marks inside their 50. Leading stat getters of both sides. Burns with 11, Lockyer 10, Scotland 10 for the Magpies. All three players working beautifully off half back for Fremantle. Hazelby has eight, Walker seven, Troy Cook five, Peter Bell just the four possessions. He's been pretty quiet in that opening term. Hazelby pretty solid as far as possessions. He's had a couple of nice interceptions as well. Cook is getting a bit of the footy, but his man Scotland has been damaging. Interesting. Pies. Jared, that breeze is trying to back around now. Yeah. I wondered at the time, the Dockers winning the toss and going that way. It really did surprise me, but Key knocks it down. Socket off the ground by Cook. Chopped off by Johnson. Hand passes back towards the middle. Storming through Haynes. Penetrating kick towards full forward. Code was up. Falls in front. Chance for Hazelby. Hit the post halfway up. Wonderful roving. Yeah, he, he reads the ball exceptionally well at the front of the pack. That's where you'll find him. Should have converted on that one, but it was a great bit of dash from Haynes coming from the back line. And that's if they're going to get back into this match. Uh, that's what they've got to do. They've got to get the ball in there quickly and give their forwards a chance. Crowe once again provided the crumb. Another opportunity wasted. Clement with a kick in. Thumps it long towards the outer side. lockie has got some space. Longmuir comes across to force a contest. McKee, uncustomary roll, roving. Freeborn to Buckley, and they work it around the outer side. No bounds on the fall. The pressure came on McGough as he went to kick it. And the turnover at half-back will be taken by Pavlich. He goes around the outer wing. Haynes has been busy in this game. Spearing kick inside, 50 up goes Hazelby and takes a very well judged mark. Sticky hands there from Paul Hazelby, hit that contest hard. And an opportunity now for the Dockers to draw first blood in this second term. Speaking of which, I think we've got a blood rule. Well, Hazelby can draw second blood in his first term, in the second term. <laughs> well, actually third, technically. <laughs> So play halted momentarily. Lockyer coming off. Paul Hazelby. There's a lot of similarities between uh, Hazelby and the former captain of the Dockers in Fletcher in that he can go forward. He has got good, good hands and uh, he can take an overhead mark, as you saw. This will test his kicking, though. Tenth possession for Hazelby from right on 50. Launches it high. Gave it everything he had. The weight on it. It's a behind. <laughs> Opportunity goes begging there. Just got the feeling that maybe Hazelby was outside his range and he knew it. And that's where Tark and Lockyer caught one of the scone. And he's off with the blood rule. Beautiful kick in. Dadak on the outer side. The kick came from Buckley. Dadak up towards the wing. Close to the boundary line. It pitches just inside the boundary. And will be tossed in. 37 plays 17. Second term at Subi. Crowd of about 33,000 now. Building all the time. Exciting. Cook. Hit him on the ample head of hair. Close to the boundary line. Buckley. Cook comes again. Gets a hand pass away. Pavlich under real pressure. Lost it. Well, Cook okay. redeems the situation. Kicks towards half forward. Longmuir in front. Backing out of the pack is Haynes. Spills. <laughs> but Theris grabs it. Hurried kick towards the wing. Scotland. Started very well. Plays on, goes a long way, hugging the boundary, kicks down inside the 50. Fraser in front, Simmons paddles it away, backing up Scotland though, followed through on his kick, runs to 50, sets it up, they'll compete about 15 metres out, strong Mark Grover. Plays on to Bell in the back pocket, 
tower forward. Bethurst can't get there in time. Richardson's in the road. Marks for Collingwood. So Mark Richardson, his third possession. Inside 50s are 12-10 in favour of the Magpies. Disposal's a bit more lopsided. 102 to 69 in their favour. Chance for the Dockers to go in again. Walker, high kick towards centre half forward. Midhurst's got three to beat. Yeah. McKee just drifts over the top and takes a pretty simple mark. Well, he was in the land of the Giants there for a few seconds, and uh, no wonder he couldn't mark the ball. Here's Cole playing his third game for the Magpies. Their number one draft pick, taken at 11 overall in last year's draft. Fraser and Simmons to the boundary line for a throw in. Well, the scoreboard a little offside at the present time, but uh, the form of the weekend suggests that it is going to be a pretty close finish. Three matches, uh, all single-digit victories to their respective sides. And all to the sides that came from behind look unlikely to win. Cool. She's had good footy. He's worked hard. Cook really lifted his work rate since halfway through the opening term. Towards half forward, Buckley and Carr hanging on the free kick. executives would be loving this their players can't hear the whistle they're not used to that so Matthew Carr at half back his fourth possession goes short to Parker steps around Buckley now not sure where to go however squares it back and the Dockers will reload again through Carr off half back to the outer side of the ground kick in front of Haynes who's been lively in this game has some time turns Wants to step around Betheris now. Sweeping handball over the top to Simmons. Simmons around the outer wing. Lopes away. Spears it inside the 50. Medhurst his target again. A couple to beat. Freeborn sense of danger. Got across well. Handball a bit hot for McKee. At ground level, Medhurst goes again. Wins the football to Cunningham from 50. A flying shot at goal. Goes right to the line. Probed on hands. But it spills off them and through for a rush behind. Haynes was good early. Kept his head with that hand pass to Simmons. And finally got it to Simmons, who drove it long. But they do look as if they need another mobile player across the half-forward line. Maybe Crow could push up uh, and give them a little bit more run across the half-forward line. The amble drop back and give the bulk in the goal square. What about Pavlich on the forward line? The anvil seems to me an ideal matchup for Anthony Rocker. Not sure he'd have the mobility to go with uh, Anthony. Clement in short. This is Johnson. Hand me that magnetic board, Jared. Come on, we'll sort this out. Johnson in the back pocket. In the bright sunshine. Sends it up towards the wing. Tarrant in front. Trying to fist it away from behind was Cunningham. Close to the line, Davis. It goes across. Let's go down to Mark Reddings. Yes, thanks, Dennis. Well, Tark and Lockyer, as you can see, a lot of bandaging around that hit. Of course, the Collingwood Medico is trying to ensure the blood doesn't seep out of there. So he's bandaged up like a mummy and just about ready to come back on. A change of jumper as well. We fix the end. He's, he's, off. he's off the ground. <laughs> Cunningham. Farmer. This is Parker. So Brown in the dugout just for the moment, getting his instructions before going to centre half back. Here's Cunningham, 75 metres out, spearing kick at beauty. Low down, it's taken by Medhurst. Only 20 metres out, slight angle, and yet back in from here. The cutting one, and he should kick this. Well, it looks dangerous when they can get the ball into their forward line quickly with the small forward setup. He's a pretty accurate kick, Paul Medhurst. Uh, just having a look at the stats of Matthew Pavlich, so just one possession to date. Maybe also reflective of Anthony Rocker uh, taking him away from the play. They are capable of doing that. They've got so many other options up forward that Rocker maybe have been asked to sacrifice his game. Medhurst going at his second of the afternoon, his 14th of the season. Goal umpire goes a long way. It's hit the post. Well, had to convert from there. Just have a look at this for uh, ball control from the big fellow, and that is why he's a player of immense potential. He's got terrific skills for a big man. He also is being taken out of the play, and they do look better. The Dockers when he isn't on Fraser, he is around the ground, but currently he's sitting in the goal square. So the Magpies play the huddle and break. Buckley with the kick in. Fremantle 2-7. Little wasteful against the best defence in the competition. That Great could be kick. costly. Beautiful kick. Found Cole. Outside defensive 50. Goes inboard looking for Freeborn. Three to beat now. The kick cleared the target. Longmuir. Justin. Handball to P. 
Peter Bell, his seventh touch off half back. Goes towards Farmer. Beautifully weighted kick. He tries to accelerate away. Great chase from McKee. Little handball back to Hazelby. He chips it inside 50, and Farmer takes the mark. So what can the wizard conjure up here? Coming up for his fifth touch for this afternoon. The one behind. His only score. Yeah, it's a tough score. It's a tough shot from there. But they have had their opportunities. We'll check the inside 50 for the second quarter shortly. But uh, I reckon it'll be lopsided in front of, in favour of the Dockers. Six to one, Jared. It's Farmer it's launches it high, right towards the goal square. Huge pack of players. McFarlane with the big fly, then tries to win the ball at ground level. Medhurst had half a chance. That was snuffed out. And Clement takes it almost to the line. Walker tries to keep it in, but it is out of bounds for a throw in. Inside 50s this quarter, six to one in favour of Fremantle. They've had their opportunities, and uh, again. They've got it in the attacking area, but they just haven't been able to uh, penetrate. Had some, had some shots, once again not taking full toll. Possessions this term, 32-18 in favour of Fremantle. Longmuir over the back, Johnson. McManus swoops on it, comes back to Justin Longmuir. Hurried snap from 35 metres as a goal. Made something out of nothing there. So all that hard work up forward finally pays dividends for the Dockers. They're back within 12 points. Justin Longmuir gets his first for the afternoon. We'll hope you're enjoying this right around Australia on Fox Footy. And speaking of Fox Footy, on the couch on Monday night with Jared and the boys is retired Swan Wayne Schwoss. And they'd be pretty devastated, the Swans, given they lost by uh, just the two points. And the way this game is going, it's going to be another close finish. So stay with us. We've got to say momentum has shifted right here. Dock is getting a lot of the football suddenly. The margin 12 points. Interference to McKee. No free kick. Longview gets a hand pass away to Bell. Haynes, bit important. Breaks from the wing. Kicks inside the 50. Hazelby on his chest. About 40 metres out. This tested him last time. Almost the identical spot. This has been the key move, I think, for the Dockers. They've found a bloke who's taken a mark inside the 50. Now, he hasn't kicked the goal. He's coming up for his third shot. But it has enabled them to keep the ball inside their 50. And if this one goes through, all of a sudden, as you said, Dennis, the momentum swinging rapidly. The joint will be jumping. Hazelby gives it a ride, misses to the far side, behind. Interesting affair. Three points to Paul Hazelby. And three goals, eight uh, to Fremantle as a side. They have uh, been most wasteful. Lockett back on the ground now to Johnson, who plays on. The freeborn in the shadows of the stand. Up from the back pocket. Scotland wants it short. Goes in that direction. Awkward half volley. Back to freeborn. Confronted. Takes on Farmer. That's dangerous. Farmer running down from behind. Got the hand pass away. Freeborn did okay. O'Brien under pressure. McKee surrounded by teammates. A runner cruising past Johnson. McGough in the shadows of the light stand. That won't help him. Comes back to O'Brien. Running from half-back, O'Brien kicks it out towards the wing. Bell will need to go, and he does. Bell plays on immediately. Pavlich, Cook is on. Shorter still is Cunningham. Cunningham goes down towards half-board. What Farmer from behind. Trying to make it a chess mark. Spoiled by a teammate. Midhurst measures the kick. Tries to bend it back. Another behind. And if you thought Scott Burns was having a quiet passage... You're right, as we see the Dockers once again missing an opportunity. But Scott Burns has been uh, sitting on the bench for the start of the second quarter, but I think Mick Malthouse has uh, thought that maybe they're lacking his drive and he's straight back on it. Would be a premeditated rotation with O'Brien coming onto the ground, but uh, Scott Burns was on fire with 11 possessions early, yeah, well, in that first quarter. Inside 50s are blown out to 7-1 in favour of Fremantle this quarter. Kicked one goal, six from that. Could prove costly later in this game. Lockyer goes short to the outer side. The mark taken by Didak. His third touch coming up for this afternoon. So Alan Didak, the number one draft pick in the 2000 draft, taken at number three overall. Starting to find his feet this year. He found his left foot on that occasion. It was a thumping kick out towards the outer wing. The mark's taken by Buckley. So Nathan Buckley. Goes long towards half forward. Parker with a well-timed fist from behind. Finds the boundary line. We'll have a throw in. 
see their marks on screen. 35-17 in favour of the Magpies. But in this quarter, it's 12 apiece. Rocker goes up in the ruck, gets it down to the front of the contest. Tarrant has been quiet so far this afternoon. Troy Cook has worked himself into this game very well. And again, we'll have another throw in. Interesting that per Peter Bell has had five possessions in the second term with Scott Burns uh, from the ground. He's, uh, he's enjoyed the release and has, able to, has been able to uh, help push his side into a more competitive position. Rocker from behind. Again, slaps it towards the line. There is Burns. Almost scores a try. It was happening here last night at Subiaco. Haynes taken in the tackle by Buckley. And another throw in. That breeze, as we saw, trying to back around still. Almost directly across the ground now. Margin 10 points midway through this second term. Rocker again against Longmuir. Worked out. him under it illegally. The free kick will go to the Magpies. Anthony Rocker. Possession's just too hard fought to give away a cheap free kick like that, particularly when Rocker can pump it so deep into their forward line. Goes looking for Leon Davis. The ground level, the numbers are with Fremantle. Here's Bell. The handball to Carr, to Bell. Not a lot of space to work in at the moment, so he gives it to Pavlich. Pavlich goes outside, defensive 50. Thumping kick out towards the wing. The well-judged mark taken by McFarlane. Bell was terrific. Troy Cook comes to the bench for a spell. He'll be replaced by Norris as McFarlane. Thumps it inside 50 for Fremantle over the top. The fly came from Medhurst at the back Richardson. He gets it to Clement and the Magpies are away. Medhurst needs to stay down. This is Buckley. Chips it up towards the wing. Does Medhurst own a car? <laughs> he <laughs> obviously wants one. The theorist to O'Bree is about 75 metres out. Pulls it back towards the middle. Tarrant almost fell in front. Bell charges it again. It's been good in this turn. Pavlich under pressure. Grover sweeping hand pass. Walker. They're out of danger, the Dockers. Walker into Mines. Maybe three. Checks. Kicks in short. Norrish. Outside the defensive 50. Ten points the difference. Fremantle coming hard at Collingwood. Cunningham. Gives it across to Troy Longmuir. Kicks it down towards half forward. Johnson. Almost the mark. Finds it on the ground. Gets a hand pass away to McGough. McGough to Richardson. Richardson in short. Well done. Haven't seen a lot of cloaks started on the bench. Gets a hand pass away. Lacuria. Kicks it down towards half forward. Well weighted kick. Well done McManus. That's the way to play that situation. So often in recent weeks, players have been penalised. That time, McManus turned around, fronted the foot. He got a hand to it. And Medhurst again. Well, the key almost in the ignition. Throw in right on the 50. Wakeland there doing the ruck duties. It came down to O'Bree for the Magpies. He goes looking for Tarrant. Works his way to oh. the front. And takes a very strong mark. Woody. He was body on body with his defensive opponent. Just worked his way to the front of the contest in good strong hands. Well, the Magpies now have got so much confidence in this fellow that they have just sat that ball up in the air and said, well, this kid's good enough. He'll get to the front. He'll take the grab. And it was a pretty hard-fought mark, but one that uh, should be rewarded with a goal. His fourth touch for the afternoon. Opportunity to kick his first goal. 35 metres out on its way. He's done enough. Sneaks it in. A goal. Tarrant gets his first. The Magpies just steady. The margin back out to 16 points. Chris Tarrant, four possessions, two marks and a goal this afternoon. And they continue to rotate the, the tall players, the Magpies, as uh, Fraser comes onto the ground. McKee has done pretty well. He has a rest. But this is what has been lacking in the uh, Collingwood second quarter. Opportunities for their forwards. There was one, and uh, Julie converted with a six-pointer. Chris Tarrant, 26 goals for this season. After 11 rounds last season, he had 31. Back in the middle, margin out to 16 points, vital goal, Ruckman up, Buckley at their feet, emerges with it, run down from behind, taken down by Brown, advantage is paid, Haynes again, kicks down towards the attacking 50, Hazelby tracked by McGough, gets a hand pass away, Longmuir, 55 metres out, centres, intended to McFarlane, coming over the top brilliantly, Presta Giacomo, spots him out towards the outer side, Freeborn, just inside the boundary, Looks back towards the middle, nothing on offer. Wants some movement though in that direction. Richardson is short, so too Clement. Freeborn taking plenty of time. 
Eventually Johnson runs hard. Well done. Demanding the footy. Johnson on the wing. Told to play on now. In trouble as a result. Kicks it down towards half forward. Went with the right foot. Under pressure. Out of bounds on the full. Reprieve for the Dockers. He did highlight how effective the Collingwood defence is at the start of the broadcast. And uh, I think it's a defence that yet that is yet to get uh, its just rewards from a publicity perspective, uh, individually at least. And you saw that great mark interception by Preston Giacomo, just highlighting some of the uh, individual brilliance that uh, some of the kids have got. Pavlich to McFarlane to McManus. They work it across the ground, still backward of centre wing. I'm sure Presti would be pleased to be known as a kid. He's been around for a bit longer than that. Sean McManus. Just hanging on to it. Umpire tells him to move it now. Has to go sideways again. Finds Simmons. No one behind Troy Simmons. Norris the danger. He works hard. But the kick goes to McFarlane. Just had enough on it. He takes the mark. Handball back to McManus. Eventually the Dockers get it forward. The kick missed its target though. Cleared Pavlich by a good five metres. He turns in exasperation. The ball goes over the line. The march at 16 points. We've got six and a half minutes remaining to half time. The throw in. Fraser in front. Brown at the back. The bounce favoured McManus. Little handball to Farmer. Tries to work something with Norrish. Richardson intercepted. Norrish goes again for the Dockers. Good vision. Good hands to Pavlich. Squares the kick up towards centre half forward. Chance there for Hazelby in mid-air. Lecuria working hard at ground level, so is McGough. He wins the football. Chance for Collingwood to break off the back edge of the centre square now through Burns. He puts it out in front of Tarrant with Parker to beat. The bounce favours Parker. He wheels back on it now and wins the football inside his own defensive 50. Sweeps the handball back to Simmons. He goes up the middle looking for Seagate. Body pressure came from Betheris. Here's Coops. Fremantle. Playing a bit of Russian roulette down back at the moment. Seagate puts his man under pressure. Parker's now under pressure as well. And the inevitable turnover came. It came to Wakeland. He chips it around the corner looking towards Clement. But in the end, a comedy of errors and quite appropriately it goes out of bounds on the fall. Yeah, that was wonderful by Colling with the pressure though. Deserved better, didn't it? Simmons to Bell. Still under pressure. Comes out wide. Norrish running out of space. Out of bounds it goes. Just under five and a half minutes till half time. Chris Connolly has seen another bad start today, but they're working back into it. They need a couple of goals before half time. Right now, it's down the wrong end for his and his men. Hand pass comes across towards Bathyrus. Tries to paddle it through. Eventually got it to freeboard at close quarters. 52 metres up. Bends it around. Lovely kick. Did Parker touch it? I don't think so. Wonderful goal. This stop play goal and this is an area where the Dockers are going to have to address at half time it was uh, everybody needed to have a man and Freeborn was free somebody had to take him it was Lee Walker uh, is matched up on him at the present time whether or not he had responsibility at the time we don't know but uh, they've got to address that shortly Nathan Buckley has a spell, as does Leon Davis, but the margin back out to 22 points for the Magpies. All this hard work from Fremantle not really getting them anywhere. The margin as it was at quarter time. Bell thumps it inside 50 again for the Dockers. McGough, up he went, got the fist, won it at ground level. Handball went looking for Lecuria. He made it good. Put Preston G. Camo under pressure. Dockers keep it alive. Crow fumbles it. Johnson put his head over the football. McManus, it comes to Cook now from 40 metres out. He swings it around his body and misses to the left-hand side. His first score for the afternoon is a minor one. And the Dockers move to 3-10-28. The Magpies 8-1-49. The margin is 21 points as we approach half-time. Lockie with the kick in. Again, we see the Magpies break from the huddle at centre-half back. Decides to play to himself. No one stands the mark. So Lockyer will run it outside the 50. Kick goes wide looking for McGough. Got hands to it and it spills out for a throw in. Inaccuracy can cost you uh, matches, but it can also save your weeks at the tribunal. <laughs> well, nicely put. Boundary throw in. Behind is Brown.
McLaughlin. Ryan got him. And he goes 52 metres out from the dock. Is attacking goal. Collingwood 8 1. Fremantle 3 10. Eight scoring shots in this term for the Dockers. For just the one goal. Richardson flew high. Cook couldn't control it. Burns put the body in. Freeborn over the top. Another bounce closer to the middle of the ground. Buckley sitting down as he did last week. Well, he is like every other player that plays in the midfield. You're going to play better if you get a seven or ten minute rest throughout uh, the, each half of footy, and I'm sure that's exactly what would be happening there with Nathan Buckley. Bree out of bounds. I'm from the old school. They can rest on the forward line when they're that good. Yeah, that's a fair argument. Boundary throw in. Left half forward. Time remaining. Richardson across there with Brown. Richardson works in front. Brown reaches over the top, slaps it down. Hazelby found some space in midair. O'Bree charges in. Norrish at the base of that pack. McGough ties him up. And that ball's not coming out. So another bounce as the clock continues to run down on this first half. Fremantle very good to start this term. Collingwood with the poise late in the quarter. Got some timely goals. Now the Ruckman touched the ball. Burns dragged down. Bell feeds it back towards the middle. Taken by Cook in trouble. Puts a hand pass away. McManus concedes. Goes back to Hazelby. Off his step. Kicks down towards half forward. Coming over the top down there. Long Muir. In front. Crow dragged down. Here to hold the ball. Richardson's got it now. Is he holding the ball? Not according to the umpire. And we'll have a ball up. Well, we know Matthew Pavlich is one of the most devastating running and a half backs in the competition but he just cannot get near the football at the moment uh, Anthony Rocker just keeps on taking him away from the play can't get involved himself free ball got it out to Lecuria Pavlich has six touches for the day averaging 17 a game in 2002 McFarland and Fraser seat to the boundary line for a throw in as Seagat comes off replaced by Anthony Grover another change as well Haynes off for Cunningham it's great flexibility the Collingwood tall forwards Tarrant just as comfortable to uh, centre half forward these days as is Fraser. And they can isolate their opponent in the goal square if need be. Another important clearance for the Magpies. Found its way towards Fraser. Coops flew, flew from behind. Parker tidies up to Cunningham. Back to Coops. Bit of runoff half back now for the Dockers. Towards centre half forward. Crow pushed in the back. Was he? He was. He'll take the free kick. You saw him come thundering across your screen. And that was the reason why they had a pair of hands in his back. Four to the wing, Trent Crow. First kick. Only his second touch. Goes inside the 50. Richardson against Brown. It spills to the back. Here's Hazelby. Handball to Cunningham. Ugly looking left foot kick went straight to Jason Cloak. And another opportunity goes begging for the Dockers. Maybe only momentarily. Bell will take it back inside 50 via Cunningham. High up and under kick. It'll come back to Cloak again. He goes with the fist and finds the boundary line. So the supply to Fremantle's forwards hasn't quite been as, uh, as good as Collingwood's at the other end. They have blown some chances in this term. But if you've got a small forward setup, you've got to look to hit blokes on the chest. You can't just bomb it up in the air like that. Wakeland to Cloak. Again along the ground. Only momentarily outside the 50. Cloak. Cook, rather. Draws a man towards him, gives it to Cunningham. Again, up and under towards the goal line. Wakeland and Cloak try to spoil each other, and one of them, fortunately for the Magpies, happened to get a hand on the ball. A rush behind a Fremantle, but, gee, for a Fremantle forward at the moment, Jared, you must be asking some questions. Well, I think that uh, Ben Cunningham, is, uh, we've seen him three times, want to go back on that left foot, and haven't seen his right foot, haven't seen enough of him, but... Uh, he is being exposed for inflexibility. He's gone on his left. But he says there ended up having to bomb it in the air. It's, it's, it's just clearly not good enough and he's hindering his side at the moment. Goes well, short that time. Well, indirect as it turns out over the head of McManus. Freeborn went in strongly. He's over the football. And so far, Ben Cunningham decided to abort what he'd been doing and that was the high ball in. He was like Darren Bennett getting a lot of hang time. Not much else. Favoring the defender, so he went short but missed the target. Farmer got through there, but in the meantime, a whistle, and the ball will come back to Richardson. Inside the last minute of the first half at Subiaco Oval, Collingwood just get the feeling they've weathered something of a storm here. 8 1 to 3.
3-11. Fremantle threw everything at them early in the quarter. And now Richardson content to let the clock run. Lovely kick. Press the Giacomo. Just goes back and marks it. Just inside the boundary line. Lecuria. We're down to 28 seconds. Still time for a score at either end. It's a big push. Longmuir, that's Troy. Dragged off. This is Burns. Good tackle. Norris got him down. Charging through O'Gree. Clever hands. Press the Giacomo. Lecuria. McManus laid the tackle. Without a 13 seconds. Bell in the opposite direction. Needs it to stay in. It didn't. Out of bounds on the full. It is a game of centimetres. And that kick was imperfect. Was well thought out by Jeff Farmer though. It was just over the line. But he uh, spiked it over to Trent Crowe who was going to run on and have a shot at the goal. There's Cloak. Having a wonderful season. Kicks into Farmer. Umpire says OK, so it's out of bounds. We're down to seven seconds. I venture to say, time only for Fremantle to score. Grab the footy, kick it inside the 50, take a mark. Although as we look inside the 50, there's that work on the mark again from Farmer. Good hard work. So often players just put up a token hand. He worked the mark that time. Longmuir hooks it down. Cook left it behind. Lockyer burns in trouble. There's the siren for half-time. Magpies stand firm in the closing seconds. And at the major break, it's Collingwood 8-1, Fremantle 3-11. At quarter time, Collingwood led 6-1 to 2-3. So the margin, 22 points then, back to 20. It got a lot closer. They got to 12 points, Fremantle, in that second term. Back with more shortly. Hi, I'm Ben Cousins. At last, a footy show that tells it like it really is. And it's got the best looking host too. Living With, only on Fox Footy. Living With, Wednesday at 9.30.
Thursday. Glamour and glitz for the domestic pits. Find out on Living With. A must-see guide to the weekend ahead. Fox League teams is every footy tipster's dream. That's like we punch you up, Mark. <laughs> Join the queue, mate. Then at 9.30, we present some of the classic clashes of the 1990s from the Fox Footy AFL archives. Indulge yourself with an evening of 100% pure footy this Thursday on Fox Footy Channel. Sunday football at Subiaco Oval, half time, and it's Collingwood 8 1 on top of Fremantle 3 11. The margin was 22 points at quarter time, it's out to 20 now. And certainly Collingwood tested in that second quarter, but they passed each and every test. Let's go down to the boundary. Mark Reddings has a special guest. Yes, thanks, Dennis. Joining me is the Collingwood forward, Jared Malloy. Of course, he's out injured at the moment. But the boys weathered a storm in that second quarter. Fremantle came hard. Yeah, Fremantle had a lot of the ball that quarter, and uh, lucky for us. For us, uh, they, they scored a lot of points, but uh, I think we're playing pretty well at the moment. Uh, kicking uh, very accurately at the moment, it's keeping us in the game. You're out of action, of course, with a broken toe, but it must be a frustrating time given the boys are playing such good footy. It is. It's probably less frustrating because we're winning. I, th I think it's more frustrating when you're not playing and you're losing, but uh, no, the guys are performing very well and uh, I'm looking forward to getting back in a couple of weeks. Hey, Jared Dennis, committee, where do you see yourself fitting into this team at the moment? Um, I, I think there's still a role for me in the, in the forward line, I suppose. Having been out for so long, uh, I, I think I'll spend a fair bit of time on the bench and work myself into it, but uh, there's still going to be a role for me there, I, I'm, I hopefully, but uh, I'm sure there will be. No doubt. Jared, Jason, Bennett, uh, you spent a fair bit of time down back when you were at Brisbane. Is that something that you would like to do again, maybe spend some time at both ends of the ground and be able to use that flexibility that you have? Um, I, I don't think so at this moment. I think our, our back line is uh, very underrated. I think we've got a lot of tools down there playing well. We've got James Clement, Shane Wakeland playing exceptional football. You've got uh, Jason Cloak who stepped up exceptionally this year. You've got Mark Richardson who's coming back from Mitri that uh, I think is looking very good today. Kept his opponent very quiet. Um, so I don't, I don't think it's necessary for me to go back down there. But I suppose the advantage I suppose of, of sitting on the bench is that you can either go forward or back line depending on the matchups and how, how everyone's going. Jared, you spend some time at Brisbane. Do you see similarities between the development of this Collingwood team and the Lions? A absolutely, Dennis. That's a, that's a good point. I, I think Collingwood's probably where Brisbane were when I first got there. And uh, the, the younger players are coming through now and they've got a lot more experience. Their bodies are, are hardened now to the AFL. We've got a couple of guys who have stepped up this year with uh, McGough playing very, very good football for a 17-year-old. We've got Scott Burns back from last year who we missed except so I think there is a lot of similarities and ho hopefully it reflects uh, with a premiership at some stage. At the start of the season, Jared, most pundits would have had Collingwood somewhere, I guess, between 6th and 10th, depending on injuries. You've certainly well and truly exceeded those expectations to the midway point of the season. Has the side sat down and reassessed its goals? Um, no, we've, we've got the, uh, the break this week, so I think we'll sit down during the week and, and assess where we are. Um, we're, uh, it's a hard one. Yes, we've exceeded some people's expectations, but... Probably not ours. We we thought last year that we had several opportunities to make the eight. Uh, we didn't capitalise on a lot of those. So we knew if we improved and continued our hard work that uh, would make the finals. And uh, that's something that we aim for at the start of the year. Jared, thanks for your time and good luck. Thank you very much. Jared Malloy, very important, I think, to Collingwood. Half time, they lead by 20 points against the Dockers. Back with more in just a moment.
pictures and movies that took ages to download can now just take seconds. Impressive. Plus, you can be on the phone while your computer is still connected to the internet. Telstra Big Pond Broadband starts from $54.95 a month. Once you're connected, great value at under $2 a day. Call Telstra now. Bring it in. Hey, Gordy. Oh, talk to me. Okay. okay. This is no. killing us, man. What are we going to do? Okay. Man, we've got to stay focused. Together. Yep. As a team. Come on, as a team. Come on. How are you coping with your midweek crisis, huh? Dull. 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 My God, it's dull. Then switch on to the Comedy Channel's Big W specials. Oh, this is going to be fun. Explore love, sex, and other natural disasters. This is the Benny Hill tribute show we're talking about here. Or maybe try a little surf and turf with Mikey Robbins. Can someone phone my wife and tell I'll be home later? Go behind the scenes and hang out with the Pythons. A lot of experiences that you'd rather not go through again. Get a taste of the world's finest stand-up with the all-new World Comedy Tour 2002. I came 75,000 miles for this. Come on, you! Yeah! For the best midweek madness this June, turn on to the Comedy Channel's Big W specials. It's full steam ahead on the Frio Show. Let's hear from the boss. There's only two dockers in Australia and we pretty much stick together. Preparation's been the key. Drop your anchor here at Fox Footy Channel for the Frio Show. Thursday, 5.45.
You look at the halfway mark stages in games. Fremantle have only led at half time in three games this season. They do finish the game strongly, yet against the Magpies, they've also great finishes. So they've got their work cut out from Fremantle. Yeah, I think the second half, uh, the second quarter is the toughest when you go into state. You can build yourself up for a big match, and they did that, Colin. We got off to a great start, but then uh, they went to sleep for 15 minutes when the Dockers came back. And it, look, this is set up for a fantastic second half of footy, and I think uh, the result is still very well and truly in the balance. Well, at halftime, it is the Magpies by 20 points. It looks to be a, a cracking second half. We'll be back with all the action right after this. Lovely to be here with the three best scribes in the game. It's the Monday Experts on the count with Jared, Mike and Robert. Reign of Carlton is over, is that right? I don't think he's fit enough. A show for the real footy fan. We're building him up a bit here, Mike. I know you think that we're jumping the gun. A Ruckman's the most important player in a, in a team. With the hottest topics. The MCC, I can assure you, have told me that Melbourne is expendable. Join them on the couch, Monday at 8.30. We've got to stay focused. Together. Yep. As a team. Come on, as a state. Pure AFL action. Powered by Fox Footy Channel and Powerade. The internet. It's great for sending emails and finding information. Now there's something exciting from Telstra that lets you do that and more much faster. It's called broadband. It's a different type of internet connection that's up to 30 times faster than normal. It lets you do all your day-to-day -day stuff a lot quicker. Pictures and movies that took ages to download can now just take seconds. Impressive. Plus, you can be on the phone where your computer is still connected to the internet. Telstra Big Pond Broadband starts from $54.95 a month once you're connected. Great value at under $2 a day. Call Telstra now. Following the success of the Lifestyle Channel's flagship program, Home. Oh, they're fantastic. Landscape architect Brendan Moore. Keep it simple and your garden will say thanks. Interior stylist Shannon Frick. Finally, this is it. And chef Peter Evans. Join me and some mates as we prepare a hearty seafood soup. Are all set for a second series. Looks fantastic. Don't miss the new series of Home, 7.30 Wednesday on Lifestyle and see what all the fuss is about. Doug is a man who enjoys the finer things in life. The three F's, food, football, and making love. Tune in and meet the whole crazy family. A rush, King of Queens, Thursday at 9, Fox 8. Uh, this is What You Want. We're live across Australia. You have to ring up and tell us what you want. SMS us, email us, or fax us. Um, Joshua, what video do you want to see? Turkey Ellis Dex, the murder on the dance floor. Text polling. I've got the oh. facts, man. The best songs, the biggest stars. You asked for it, you get it. What he wanted. I wanted to know if he could take his present from me. It's great SMS came through. Rosemary in Sydney has called us. Hi, Rosemary. Hi. What You Want. Live from 4 p.m. Thursday to Saturday, only on Channel V. Yeah. On the hour, every hour, Australia's Sky News. Sky News delivers complete, immediate coverage of news as it happens, whatever it takes. Across Australia, on the hour, every hour, Sky News. From the back pocket to full forward and beyond, Fox League teams is the best start to your weekend in football. So if you're going to play a Matthew Lappin, you just got to wear him like a second skin. This will be last man standing. All the ins, the outs, the matchups, and the maybe. That's a super strong side. This bloke has been gone about four times. Ago. Join me, Anthony Hudson, and the panel. One of them's going to cut loose and go berserk. And the beard is back. Get that off. I've lost it. Fox League teams, 8:30 Thursday night on Fox Footy Channel. Absolutely inspirational. 
And speaking of inspiration, here is a man uh, a little bit older than that, but uh, was recently inducted into the Hall of Fame. He's from Adels, George Doig. As you say, elected to the AFL's Hall of Fame. Kicked nine goals on the boo and went on to kick 1,111 for East Fremantle. In 1934, he kicked 152 for the season. And that is something. He made a wonderful speech. George Doy from East Fremantle. Not a big man, but certainly big in terms of records in Western Australia. Half time at Subi. Collingwood, 8 1, up by 20 points over the Dockers, 3 11. Mark Riddings is standing by. Mark, what news? Yes, Dennis, we'll have my ear to the wall of the Fremantle Dockers dressing room. And I can tell you, Chris Connolly has just called for patience. He's saying they're getting plenty of the football, but they must keep persevering. And, of course, the Collingwood side, having weathered that storm in the second quarter, they've got the breeze in this third quarter. It has stiffened to the right of screen. So, Collingwood fans, you'll probably kick with about a two-goal breeze in this third term. Perhaps that explains the decision, Dennis, to uh, kick into the wind, uh, which is most unusual in league footy. Mm. The Weather Bureau may have indicated a strengthening breeze. We are talking about Terry Wheeler before. Yeah, well, he got his fortune with something like that. He did place his uh, reputation in the hands of one of the local fishermen from Williamstown who uh, completely got it wrong. And uh, Terry followed that advice and the, the gale that was meant to come didn't. They lost by about four or five goals. Careers hang in the balance they do. on such things. So the Magpies are out there now. The dock is not far ahead of them. Peter Bell, very industrious in the second term. And the dockers with a bit of work to do. And the Malthouse, actually, they've got a reunion, the 1992 West Coast Eagle Premiership team, next Friday, I think it is. And Michael Malthouse will be there for that. I think one of the big questions is, uh, can Matthew Pavlich get into the game? I think he's such a talented player, and they've got so much flexibility in their tall defenders, the Dockers, that I reckon he could just line up across half-back and take whoever comes. Well, what about tossing him forward? Perhaps in that second term when they were blazing away, Pavlich in the square wouldn't be the worst option, would it? No, it wouldn't be, but uh, I guess the, the thought process at Fremantle is that you put your smartest players behind the ball and get them to create. Mm -hmm. And I think Matthew Pavlich has certainly uh, described exactly that. A very intelligent player and a great architect, but he's got to have the footy in his hands to do it. Well, the way the WA coaches are going, talking about John Worsfeld and Chris Connolly, far be it for me to second-guess them because both of them above expectations this season. Chris Connolly has done a terrific job with these Dockers. And of course, we touched on Michael Malthouse. There's Chris looking on. Five wins, one loss on this ground so far. We touched on Michael Malthouse and how his record... At Collingwood starting to emulate what he did in those early years with the West Coast Eagles. Will he win a premiership in his third year? Well, it's going to be tough, but who would bet against it? Not many in Western Australia, certainly. Adrian Fletcher, former Docker, alongside him there. That's Paul LeCurier. Best and fairest for the Magpies last year. A completely different atmosphere coming to the game. Dennis and uh, inside the stadium and it really is fantastic now being an enclosed stadium but uh, having not been here for 12 months and having seen the Dockers at home the atmosphere and the air of expectation is just completely different uh, and I think if they can just find some goals among their very talented but inexperienced forward line it's going to be a very excitable crowd uh, in half an hour or so's time. Let's find out if they can. Start of the second half at Subiaco Oval as the opening bounce. Simmons charges in, taps it down. Awkward bounce for Scotland. McKee got a hand pass away to Freeborn. He kicks it down towards half forward. Fraser is down there, tied up. Spills across to Davis. Took a long time to get rid of it. McManus. Hand passes to Cook. Cook forward of half back. High kick down towards half forward. Hazelby. Was he held? Doesn't matter. That's another clever mark. He's playing very, very well for Hazelby. Coming up for his 16th possession. Looks towards the middle, short to Grover, plays on immediately, Grover down towards half forward, from 70 metres out, sets it up long, Medhurst in front, oh that was very, very clever. Cloak, don't often see that, he's been so good this season, the young man, he wanted body contact, he was going back looking for it, Medhurst aware of that, belied his years and simply stepped around him, watch it again.
uh, created because of Hazelby, uh, who has just been uh, an inspiration in the air. He's marking like a tall forward, and he's uh, not much bigger than Troy Medhurst himself, a young Medhurst uh, who has gone for everything up in the air and come down with little stud on the ground, kicks a goal. It's the margin back to 15 points. Paul Medhurst with his second goal for the afternoon. Trent Crowe sits on the pine. Only two touches in the opening half. Simmons comes over the top, wins the tap down, tried to give it to Peter Bell. Plenty of players on hands and knees there. Scotland's one of them, got it to Burns. Burns gets a kick forward. Grover came across the front of the contest, tapped it on. Rocker got it for the Magpies, gave it to Buckley. He goes inboard. Inside the 50, here's Tarrant. Dangerous, twisting and turning. Handball back to Buckley. Spots a target, it's Burns. Burns works Cook underneath it. Cook brought it to ground. Scotland at ground level. Little handball to Johnson. Johnson to Oakbury. The pressure came from behind. It came from Cook. Well done. Good numbers. Did well. Got it out to Bell. Bell slips the tackle of Oakbury. And then dribbles it towards the line, hoping to find it. But his opposite skipper was there, Buckley. Got and he that. spears it inside 50. Oh. Through the hands of Lockyer. Lecurio overran it. Haynes went off the ground. It's still alive. Free kick. It's going to the Fremantle Dockers. And 50. So things just going Fremantle's way in the early stages in this third term. They reduced the margin to 14 points. And now Daniel Haynes, who's been impressive, coming up for position number 12. Has a runner on the far side. The kick split the difference, but it's got to come back anyway. And Haynes will take his kick from the middle of Subiaco Oval. The game being played in one half at the moment. All players forward of the ball. And that means all players, except for the fellow with the ball in his hand. So he's going to have a very crowded forward line to kick into, probably up in the air and uh, hope for a crumb. So Haynes does exactly that, goes inside the 50. Longmuir presents himself, could only get one hand of the ball. At ground level, Richardson fights with Brown. Umpire comes in and bounces. Important goal, that first one for Fremantle. Just builds their belief. Wide open spaces of Subiaco. The ball's deep inside the Fremantle forward line. Freeborn at ground level. Tried to get it out only as far as Cunningham to Hazelby. McGough rides him into the ground illegally. Free kick to the Dockers. Paul Hazelby a chance to kick his first for the afternoon. And this is a matchup that's hurting Collingwood uh, and maybe needs to be addressed. He's had a very good year, McGough. But he's being stitched up at the moment by Paul Hazelby. And that was uh, a tackle that slipped too high and should cost him another goal. Three behinds, Hazelby. Set shot from 45 metres out. Kick on its way. They run to him. They like it. It's a goal. So the Dockers get the opening two goals of the third term and the margin back to eight points. Paul Hazelby with 17 possessions adds a goal to that. And the game is well and truly alive at Subiaco. Yeah, it is, and it's because the Dockers midfield have got on top. They were belted in the first quarter. Uh, the move of Hazelby up forward has given them a marking target, albeit only a small one, but he's given them an avenue towards the goal. But at ground level, their intensity is on top of the prize. Troy Simmons getting some medical attention there. Play restarts. Throw it over the top, knocked it down. Farmer kicks it down towards half forward, runs towards the boundary line. So to Freeborn. Accelerates through the ball, it spills across the line, will be tossed in. You made a very salient point, I think, Gerald, earlier on, talking about teams setting themselves when they come into state. It's hard to burn off the locals, isn't it? Well, we saw Collingwood really uh, jump out of the blocks, and then they fell away. Farmer inside the 50. Brown has that ball surrounded. The anvil goes off the ground inside the 50 metres. Brilliantly done. A oh, wonderful metres. Farmer should kick the goal. So the wizard. 
and Jeffrey Farmer gets his first. And Fremantle on this third term, three inside 50s for three goals. The margin back to two points. A fantastic contest developing here at Subiaco. Back in the middle, Rockers in the ruck for the Magpies, up against Longmuir. Longmuir jumped early, neither of them got an effective tap, but Bell won it again. Out of the middle, the Dockers, Cunningham to Haynes. Just pushed off his kick by O'Bree. Goes looking for Hazelby, who kept his feet. Lost control, and we got it to Crow, who's just on the ground. Crow runs to 52 metres, loads it up, goes behind. to Collingwood at the start of the year winning matches and slowly beginning to build the self-belief they're coming off a couple of losses 20 possessions for four goals in this quarter Rocker on the ball came down to O'Bree picked up by Cook confronted by O'Bree spills across to Scotland kicks down towards half forward Walker reaches around Davis punches it away Davis goes again was he held not according to the umpire let a good tackle down goes Grover ball locked in on the bounce so Michael Malthouse now has some decisions to make perhaps Fraser on the ball he's also got to find some ball winners at ground level the intensity of the Dockers is uh, well and truly on top of the Collingwood players you've got to win those uh, loose balls at the moment Fraser well done Davis no space to work in didn't have the footy surely play goes on it was a strong tackle from Cook McFarlane to Longmuir across half back that's interesting Cunningham squeezed kicks it down towards half forward McManus did well ghosted across in front of Richardson knocks the ball out towards the wing Farmer is on for the short one ignores that got the arms free gives it to the anvil having trouble now he's got it he's at right half forward Brown 60 metres out unloads long kick Midhurst well it's thumped away by Cloak at least I think it was Cloak he stayed on the ground Finally, delighted with his start, I'm sure. He's ruffled his hair as a strength, as his marking, but you wonder about the advisability of that one. Not sure how Paul Hazelby feels being a ladder. Over the back of the ruck contest, it comes to McGough. The Magpies under siege in this third term. Here's Haynes. He gathers 65 from goal, sells the dummy to O'Bree. Gets back on his right boot and a daisy cutter. Right onto the chest of Paul Hazelby. Great poise from Daniel Haynes, playing just his seventh game of football, came off the rookie list early this season. And he is having the best game of his short career. 14 possessions and a bullet-like pass to Hazelby. Huge kick this one, isn't it? So when he comes, Hazelby starts it to the right. And again, he's pushed it. One goal for Paul Hazelby. There's been a flaw in his game this afternoon. It's been his finishing. 19 possessions to the 10 minute mark of the third term. The margin now extends to five points. He may well have taken more marks in the forward 50 than any other Dockers player in an individual game this year. Buckley short to Lecuria. He holds it up. Collingwood just staffed with the ball early in this third term. Can't get supply down to their forward line. He goes looking for Lockyer. And again, that man Haynes comes across the top. Does the percentage thing and fists it to the line. What a transformation. Fremantle up by five points. If you've stayed too long at the fridge, this has happened while you've been gone. As the Buffalo Springfield said, something is happening here. Scotland out of bounds on the bounce. Let's get down to Mark Reddings. Yes, thanks, Dennis. Well, Troy Simmons has come back on the ground in a different jumper. Number six, Tony Mordrazol Guernsey is being worn by the Dockers Ruckman who took off the bandaging around his head but now it's back on because there were some bleeding problems 28 possessions the Dockers to just 15 for Collingwood they're just not getting near the footing Cook over the ball slaps it out Haynes was he taken high yes he was he's been terrific inspired second term by the youngster not a good kick though Davis opted out of the contest allowed Rocker to mark in front the big man Anthony Rocker suddenly trailing they got six goals in the opening term interesting kick wobbles down towards the attacking 50 nobody touched it in flight takes an awkward bounce Parker goes after it wanted it most on one knee Cook is down off the ball free kick to Cook he's left it too yeah they've stopped the run there Collingwood you could just 
see that long bomb from Anthony Rocker who gets another opportunity. He kicked the long tear and got the ball to the ground, but there was no ground players, no ground support players. They're not doing the uh, unselfish running here, Collingwood, and it is a recipe for disaster. Rocker did well. Hard running to get across, though. And cut off that kick coming out. Unloads for the spiral. Well, it wanders down towards the pocket. Parker just angles it across the line. That was a lazy kick, really. Too far out to score, so you wonder what that would achieve given they've got some good marking players deep in attack. So a chance for the Magpies. A rare chance in this third term. Steady the ship. Fraser goes up, gets the tap down. Tarrant had hands on it briefly. Balls at ground left. Tarrant goes again. Pavlich wins it. Handball out to Bell. The farmer puts him under pressure. Back to Pavlich and he'll concede. Rush behind goes to the Magpies. Their first score for the third term comes 12 and a half minutes in. Theris and McGough look on. As Pavlich comes to the member side, moves it quickly and finds Troy Cook. His 16th possession coming up. Been averaging 21 a game in season 2002. His third on the Dockers' disposal list for the season. It's been important this afternoon. Kicks towards the wing, as is this man. Paul Hazelby. Hits the ground running, gives it to Cunningham. Off to Seagat. Through the middle of Subiaco goes Andrew Seagat. He thumps it long inside 50. Croats hits himself in front. Got one hand to it, almost brought it down. Didak at ground level. The wizard flashed across the screen. McManus working hard at ground level. Didak. Cool head to Wakeland to Lecuria. And the Magpies through Richardson bring it to the member's side. Clement. Outside defensive 50. Has a man in space. It's O'Bree. Shane O'Bree has a couple of bounces. Has three now. Waits for an option to present itself. Just kicks it high and long. Leon Davis. Not much chance there unless it bounces his way. It almost did. Parker. Kept it alive. Didn't do a good enough job, according to the umpire, of disguising his intentions. And deliberate has been paid in that forward pocket. That was a tough decision, but a fair one.
take it to the line for a throw in. So an outstanding 17 minutes of football in this third term. Fremantle threw everything at the Magpies, got in front. Collingwood have just steadied in the last five or so minutes. Rocker against Pavlich. Rocker got the tap to the back of the contest. Here's Lockyer crashing through. Little handball to Johnson to Lecuria. They got the man on the overlap at Scotland. He runs to 48 metres, attacks the goal, goes for home and puts it through. Scotland gets his second. The Magpies answer the call. They re-establish a 10-point lead. And again, I think it was another goal from a set play. That time was Lockyer who got the important possession. They weave through the defence of the Dockers with hands and then Scotland showed once again he's a very good finisher from just inside the 50. He bangs another goal through for his second and extending the lead. That's the effort by the Magpies responding here. The game very much on the line. Ten points the margin now after Fremantle hit the front. Simmons in, hands to it, fell at their feet. McKee at close quarters, very close quarters. Got it back from O'Brien. Buckley somehow gets out of there. Kicks inside the 50. Watch for Davis. Well, up he went. He's been watching Midhurst. Towards the back of the pack. It's taken by Walker. Good line against the line. Kept his head, comes away. Bell off is short. Seagate's the man, though. Well spotted. Seagate, close to the boundary line. Away you go. Seagate, now to watch half forward. Coming up on the lead, Simmons. A real test for the fibre of both clubs. Simmons across the ground, terrible kick. Lecuria with a chance. Longmuir wrestles him for the footy. Down he goes, Lecuria on top. Trying to force a passage, Scotland. Over the football there was Rocker, got it out. On one knee, Pavlich. Now a chance for McManus, seems to have recovered. Slips the hand pass away. Here's Bell forward of the wing, kicks it down towards right half forward. Wide of the mark, Hazelby the target. It bounces out of bounds. Throw in, 7.43, remaining till three-quarter time. Collingwood answering a spate of goals from the Dockers. And there's Trent Crowe. One goal this quarter. Be a handy if he could get another one. He's with uh, Shane Wakeland, but uh, James Clement is the new opponent for Paul Hazelby. That looked awfully like him for him. Richardson and Lecuri to Didac. High kick towards the outer wing. Troy Longmuir tracks it back. Buckley marks him. Havlich sells the dummy, gets around Rocker, tries to draw McGough to him, gives a little handball out. Fremantle will go inside the 50. Lockyer stands underneath it and takes an uncontested mark in his defensive 50. A little handball to O'Brien, found himself in heavy traffic. Swung it wide out to Wakeland. He goes straight up the middle. The Curie's got some space. Norris ran hard to stand the mark and just hold him up. So Paul the Curie. Backward to the centre circle, kicks towards half forward. Fraser lost his man and takes the mark uncontested, 55 metres out from goal. Open goal square, chips it over the top. Batheris ran hard to him. And in the end, it was a 50 50 kick. I'm not sure he knew what he was wanting to do there. And it wasn't the best possible result for the Magpies. The ball comes straight back into play and finds McFarlane at half back. So it's a 10 point margin. Six and three quarter minutes remaining in this third term as Jason Norris comes from the field and gets on the phone. Kick across goal it was dangerous. Troy Longmuir looks up, he's suddenly got three to beat, dives on the football. Catheros dives on him, has to get it out. Umpire says holding the ball. So the Magpies, a chance to go inside 50 again. Catheros moves it quickly to Lockyer. He kicks towards the top of the square. Rocker's there, some tall timber. Rocker got hands to it. At the back, Pavlich spun out of trouble. Little handball to McFarlane. McFarlane oh. chips it, kick outside 50. It's going to come straight Shocker. back in again. Free kick. It's going the way of Fremantle. <laughs> and they managed to dodge a bullet there. Very lucky. Fraser was held as he approached that marking contest in the square. Didn't get a free. Cunningham up towards right half back. High ball towards the wing. Well, McManus in the field short. Got Mark is paid to Longmuir. McManus simply along for the ride. Longmuir towards centre half forward. Plenty of Collingwood players over the top. 
reason why Collingwood is a genuine premiership contender. It's hard to really go against the flow of the game, find something when perhaps there's not a lot left. We well found something in spades, tossed in. Ruckman hook up, Simmons missed the footy, Hazelby kept his head, did nicely, crowed on the turn, snaps, gets his second at the corner. Justin Longmuir took it on his chest. Handball to Carr. 
who ran for him. Spears it inside the 50. Here's that Medhurst Presta Giacomo battle. Presta Giacomo did wonderfully well. Attacked the ball, took it in his hands, and then dished it off to Freeborn. Kicks around his body. The ball dribbles over the line in front of Nathan Buckley. 15 possessions for Buckley today. Averaging 23 a game in 2002. Hasn't had his usual impact, Jared? Well, I think he's been important in this quarter. I think he's been one, along with Lecuria, to... Uh, to turn the momentum but he's going to have to have a big sec last quarter because the running power of the Dockers at the moment looks to be the uh, telling factor. Troy Longmuir wobbles a kick inside 50 his brother Justin gets on the end of it from the boundary line banana kick with the right foot
sense of theater. Well, it's pretty confusing, I think, Dennis, because the body language of Matthew Pavlich suggested that it had gone over the post and uh, it was only a point. But I think that one makes up for a pretty poor performance in the third quarter where Josh Fraser had an opportunity to uh, shoot at an empty goal face and it went out of bounds. Just dribbled out. It wasn't a great uh, result. But this one was at Buckley barking the orders to General. So the Magpies back in front. 11-5-71, Fremantle 9-13-67. What has really been a wonderful contest. It's a settled day. I just sense it's going to be close. Could be a thriller. Simmons got the tap down. Under the path of Tark and Lockyer. Strong tackle from Cook. Prevented him getting an effective disposal away. Came to Scotland. He kicks towards the wing. Cole leads in the race for it. Coops right on his hammer. Cole keeps it in. Kick towards half forward. It'll bounce towards the 50. Cloak slaps it on. Rocker against Pavlich. Pavlich paddles towards the line. Here's Leon Davis. Gathers. The excitement machine just oh. fell to ground. Just slipped at the crucial brilliant. stage. But a brilliant handball to McGough. Equally good tackle from Parker to close him down. The ball's still alive. Didak on the boundary line. Keeps it alive. McManus tackles him. Ball's still sitting there. It is still in play. Cunningham headed towards the line. And eventually found it. Well, what about the athleticism of Leon Davis? He slipped, but almost didn't go to ground. He just maintained his uh, balance and flipped out a magnificent handball to set up what was uh, almost a shot at goal. And a goal-saving tackle from Parker. Pavlich got the tap. Davis flashed across the screen. It comes now to Cook on his left boot. High kick towards half-back. Richardson sets himself up behind. Brown thumps it to the front of the contest. Here's Cook again for Fremantle. Possession 21 for him. Up across the wing. Troy Longmuir against Wakeland. It's fisted towards the line. And we'll, we will have a throw in. It's the Magpies by four points. Just over 18 minutes remaining in the final term at Subiaco. Tarstan, McKee and Simmons. Both playing their 50th this afternoon. Scotland has been very good in those situations. Carr, hand passes towards half forward. Lockyer, trussed up, running out of space. That's deliberate, says umpire Allen. Simmons at his feet. McKee wraps him up in a tackle. Ball still alive. Players throw the 
throwing themselves in from both sides. Didak over the top to Prestige Como. Umpire spotted a free kick. It's going the way of the Magpies for too high. Before we noticed there's another opponent, James Clement. Didak towards the wing. Has to come back. come back. So frenetic pace, amazing pressure from both sides around the football. There is Paul Medhurst. How did he get rid of that? So Didak from defensive 50. A pause in play. Kicks long towards the wing. Fraser presents himself. Got one hand to it. Hazel will be at ground level to go forward for the dock as he gathers. High kick will go inside 50. Didak goes back with courage. Spills to Prestige Como. Sidesteps Crowe. Comes out towards Locker. He's wrapped up. Batheris. Got a kick away. Cole work coops under the ball. It spills to the back. Here's McGough. Has a bounce around the outer wing. McFarlane runs at him. Got McGough steps inside. Causes a problem for himself. Buckley diving in on top of it was Carr. Pavlich has got it now for Fremantle. And now they'll run it forward. Cunningham releases the handball to Seagat. Away they go. Seagat's got it now from Brown. Inside 50. Long Muir. Farmer at the back. Just snuck to the back of the contest. It cleared the heads of Longmuir and Shane Wakeland. And Jeff Farmer takes the mark 35 metres out, almost directly in front. Gee, that was wonderful football on the other side, wasn't it? Well, McGough had the ball and it was uh, going to be deep into the Collingwood forward line except for the turnover. Farmer's kicked one. Stabs at it. Doesn't look happy with it off the boot, nor should he be. He misses to the right-hand side for a behind. So goals will be golden in this final term. Only one so far in eight and a half minutes. It went the way of the Magpies, and they lead by four points. What a finish. Former East Fremantle player, Tarkin Lockyer to bring it in. Chris Tarrant. Can you get him back out there? They need him. Short one, Scotland. Nearly 15. Heath Scotland has played very well this afternoon. Coming up with his 25th possession, Chansey, freeborn, in the back pocket. Well, Collingwood need one of their taller forwards, Fraser, a rocker, to push up the ground and give uh, Glenn Freeborn a target. Buckley offers, very short, freeborn taking a long time, Leon's the call. They set short of the wing, down in front, Cole, great balance, confronted by Bell, Cook, been everywhere, Bell, Hazelby is on for the short one, not much on offer, kept his head, McManus runs at them now, forward of the wing, short McManus, arches the back aggressively, kicks inside the 50, tried from behind, got it on the deck, now a chance in front for Theris, coming at him hard McManus, Lockyer does well, directs the ball across to Wakeland, hand passes to Freeborn, takes on a would-be tackler, down he goes, but Theris under pressure, jammed it on the boot, ricochets to Seagat, slips a hand pass away to Hazelby, Lines up, getting barrel straight. Brilliant goal, Hazelby. Didn't have a lot of time to think about it, and uh, it wasn't the greatest of connection, but right at this stage, he's not looking at technique, he's looking at a result, and it was gun barrel straight, Denison. Jeez, there just appears to be a certain sense of inevitability about this result. The Dockers back in front, the margin two points. We've gone ten and a half minutes in this thrilling final term. Twisting and turning this game. It's been an absolute ripper. Simmons against McKee. Simmons got the tap down, here's Bell. The Dockers to go forward again. Cunningham off the front edge of the centre square. Will spear it inside 50. Farmer, can he keep it into the pocket? Expect something special here. Wants to take on Freeborn. Squares it up. And just misses to the far side. They were screaming for the free kick, the Fremantle players and supporters. Medhurst not happy. Net result of that is a behind to the Dockers. The margin extends to three points. Lockyer with the kick in. Comes to the member's side. Buckley. Carr comes late, but Buckley takes the mark. Defensive 50. Goes over the top. Scotland is his target. Pavlich came across to force a contest. At ground level, Fraser to Lecuria. Runs away from centre wing. Steps inside Peter Bell now. Paul Lecuria will go towards half 
forward, Rocker on the long lead, dives, can't quite get there, first to recover, Parker there as well, Didak, handball was looking for Cole, cut off by Coops, he goes to ground, handball back to Pavlich, he's got a runner out wide, it comes in towards Grover, just gathers inside the line, and he chips up the boundary line and finds Peter Bell. Defensive 65. Jeez, a Collingwood midfield really need a chop out from their tall forwards. They look as if they're working hard when the ball's in their area, but they also look as if they're pretty happy to give up the chase uh, once it's out of their area. So Bell goes to Norris off the back edge of the centre square. He'll come back to Bell. Possession number 29 for the Fremantle skipper. Jason Cloak stands the mark. Three points is the margin. We've got 11 and a half minutes remaining in this game. Rocker may have a hamstring. He's certainly grabbing the back of his left leg. I reckon his match is over. That last long lead was a tester. And he has pulled up sore. He stands the mark. Shane Parker with the ball. Will he take him on? Decides not to. Kicks long towards half forward. Big pack of plays. Simmons over the top. Shoot. Couldn't quite bring it down. Hazelby at ground level. Goes looking for Farmer. Farmer. Farmer takes it at 50. Wants to play on. Call two now. 55 metres out. Goes onto his left boot. Pass comes in. It was an absolute beauty. And he finds Matthew Carr. Two wonderful kicks back to back, weren't they? Two wonderful kicks. How would you describe them, Dennis? Wonderful. I would have said seven metre perfect myself. <laughs> Sorry. Chris McKill. Matthew Carr. He's won some important possession though, Hazelby. It was a great leap from Simmons. Didn't quite grab it, but uh, at ground level, Hazelby has had a huge game. Huge kick in the context of this game. From 35 metres out, kick on its way. The crowd are up at Subiaco, and the Dockers lead by nine points. Matthew Carr gets his first. The Dockers get their second for this final term. It was a wonderful build-up, and Matthew Carr finishes the job as Peter Bell comes to the boundary line. Jeez, and I reckon Paul Meadows to be still seething about that uh, possible free kick he could have got. Let's have a look at it. There's Jeffrey Farmer setting it up. And was he dragged? Was he taken? Well, oh, there may have been a bit of acting, but it was there. Well, Peter Bell is off the ground. 29 possessions. He's averaging 26 a game this season, up from 25 in his last season. The Kangaroos. Let's go down to the boundary. Anthony Rocker getting plenty of treatment as we speak, but Ad Jurat suggested unlikely to see him again, and the crowd certainly becoming a factor in this final quarter. Cook has been wonderful. Takes it out of the middle again. Down towards hard forward. Wakeland needs a fist. Got one too. Hazelby almost through. Still a chance. Hazelby 35 metres out. Bends it back. Not enough. Behind. What a test for the Magpies now. Four points, is it, for Hazelby? In fact, it's five. Five is kicked. Michael Malthouse working double time in the foreground. Dean Laidley. Freeborn, so often used in that area. To Burns. He's at left half back. Burns towards the wing. Fraser, Great strong mark. grab. Great wonderful mark. hands. Of course, the byproduct of Rocker going from oh. the ground is it may free up Matthew Pavlich and his run and creativity through the middle of the ground may be a telling factor in the last 10 minutes. Tinge of cramp there for Josh Fraser. It's called the House of Pain, and in many respects it's that because of the physical nature of uh, the contest, but also the lungs. They get a real workout here in the vast spaces. Fraser, the raw tar thought, Grover spins out of one tackle into another. Coops, good throw it over his head. Richardson, 60 metres out, long kick down towards full forward. Tarrant in front, could have been held, but down in front. Chance for Walker, trying to paddle it out there. Davis, Norrish, there was no tackle, no free. Pavlich tries to paddle it through his own legs. Locked up, ball up, bounce in the pocket. 11-16, Fremantle, calling with 11-6. Just over nine minutes to go. James Walker slow to get up for Fremantle. Just in the hands of the trainers inside their defensive 50. Well, Needs no to wonder. pick up his man. No wonder, he was hit by a steam train. Jason Cloak just delivered a magnificent ship. Over the top came Richardson, there is Walker. Coops to Cook, who was well wrapped up by Leon Davis. Buckley tries to keep it alive for his side, but the handball went in board. It was all Freeman or Cook. Ugly looking kick towards the boundary line. Cresta Giacomo goes back, was surely held. Wakeland, he's wrapped up in a tackle. It's ferocious in there at the moment. Cresta Giacomo emerges. The umpire says, I'll bounce it. Was held in there for long enough. Jeez, they ignore some free kicks, the umpire. I mean, that was clearly a scrag of the jumper to Cresta Giacomo. They see it, they just elect mm. that it's only not worthy of a free kick. What? Yeah. How they make those 
assessments is uh, very dubious. Simmons tapped it down. Cunningham onto his left boot goes towards the wing and finds Crow. Marks in front of Prestigier Como. Open forward line for Fremantle. Medhurst, Farmer down there as well. So is Longmuir. He goes sideways to Cook. Cook steps around Buckley. Then launches it inside 50. Farmer from the back just lurking. Hits the ground. Medhurst there as well. Spins out of a tackle uh -huh. as Medhurst. 40 metres out. On the way. Got into his 
shimmy, then fell over. And the ball's gone out of bounds. Deliberate says the umpire. Well, the young fellow who got into his patented move a bit too early. And then thought, heck. Parker's got it. 12-18-90 to 11-6-72. Bear in mind, Collingwood led by 22 points at quarter time, 20 at the half. Jared made the point. It wasn't over. It certainly wasn't. Parker around the outer side. In front of Hazelby, so important earlier in the game. Buckley trying hard. Lecuria's away. Still Lecuria. Last roll of the dice time for Collingwood. Lecuria takes on a would-be tackler. Chips it down towards Harford. Good mark, Burns. Plays on quickly. Didac from 52 metres. Needs to be straight for the Magpies, and it's not. Sneak within three goals, but only by the barest of margins as Cunningham comes off for a spell. Back to 17 points. Four minutes remaining on the clock. Play on's the caller. Comes out to Bell. Possession number 31. Goes long looking for Carr. Buckley flies over the top. Spills to the back. Hazelby there. Been outstanding this afternoon. Handball back to Simmons. Towards half forward. There's Medhurst working. Preston Giacomo under the ball. A mismatch in size you would expect, but as we've seen this afternoon, Medhurst deceptively strong and unquestionably cunning. Being one of the great trades for at least a, a couple of clubs, Bandy to the Bulldogs and uh, Simmons to the West Coast, Ellis of course to Melbourne, and it's working all round. O'Bree from the ruck contest towards the wing, it's all Fremantle and Grover in front of 33,088 fans, the biggest ever crowd for a Fremantle home game outside of Derby. Bell. Goes looking for Seager, it clears his head. Here's a chance for the Magpies. Wakeland sold himself into trouble. Released to Didak. Didak towards half forward and there is no one there. It's on behind the play. Free kick downfield. Wakeland. Looks like the anvil, Jerry. Well, he's been quiet, but he's uh, he doesn't need all that many opportunities. He's quite lethal. So the free kick will come back. It's coming back to Wakeland. They've separated themselves from that scrum. He goes short to Lecuria. Play on's the call. It wasn't 15. The players don't realise it. Lecuria says, come to me. And then kicks towards half forward. Coops was spectacular but ineffective. Geez, you'd hate to have kicked a kick at the Dockers. <laughs> Boy, would that be a contest. You'd hate to be the one standing at the front, wouldn't you? Two groups that keep creeping backward and backward and backward. But Richardson has it 70 metres out from goal. Under three minutes remaining, the 17 points is the margin. Richardson pops it up for Fraser in the forward pocket. On to the back throw in. Two and three quarter minutes remaining, 17 points the margin in favour of the Fremantle Dockers. I think you'd find Midhurst. Farmer. Farmer. Simmons all down one end. Four down one end. Everybody else down the other. Pavlich knocks it down. Grover storms away. He's been resolute in defence. I think they've got it. One the Dockers up towards the wing. Off hands Farmer. Charging through Johnson. Could have been taken high, Johnson. Pressure. Calling with very tired. Call against the flow. Somehow got it to Bethira. Slow down to Johnson. Johnson 75 metres out. They need a mark. They need a goal. Clark went back with